Okay, we should be going live. It looks like it's appearing. Hello, we're early. Take that, every other streamer on Earth. Uh, so, <laughs> shots fired, everybody. We are doing a PC build today. Let me know in the chat if you can see and hear us okay. I've noticed that sometimes after the streams get published immediately when we're done, uh, some of the early comments are, yes, I can see and hear you okay. Just to make sure we're on the same page, if you're writing a comment below the video, it is no longer live. Um, so, However, you are invited to tell us if you can hear and see us okay after we've already streamed, because at that point, there's nothing we can do. Uh, okay, so we are building... YouTube is getting really interesting. I didn't know this was a feature before. I guess they've added this. YouTube just gave me a, a pop-up on the streaming page. And it, here, everyone will appreciate this. Uh, so we went live approximately 30 seconds, oh, 40 seconds ago. And it says, it pops up immediately within the first minute. And it says, now would be a good time to insert ads. Creators earn more money inserting ads when more viewers are watching. Give it a try. Like, no, no. Now, now is when it starts. YouTube invented that feature. That's right. There's, there's no other streaming service where you can insert ads at will. Uh, uh, actually, no uh, other streaming service exists. Yeah. Did you know that? Only YouTube. <laughs> yes, I knew that. Yeah. There's no. I mean, nobody. Like, wouldn't it be? It'd be cool if you could like watch shows online or something, but. Just, so only I mean, YouTube exists. Yeah, I don't really fly out to Blockbuster. Yeah, there's the one mm -hmm. still in America, so that's where I get my movies. I saw they had a lot of copies of Morbius there. <laughs> Glad you know the history of this particular <laughs> Blockbuster. <laughs> so Patrick pictures. is joining me, who is apparently an expert on Blockbusters. Uh, and let's see. Oh, people are asking, who sabotaged you? Uh, oh, AC, thank you. I'll turn the AC off right now. I forgot about that. We need to add that to our checklist. Wait, you can't read? Who, who sabotaged us? Oh, yeah, they it is written it so on clearly. the case. Yeah. Here, maybe if I turn around, that'll help. All right, the AC's off. Thanks, everyone, for that. It was Beep's Costumes. <laughs> they did this. Yes, Beep's Costumes uh, sent this to us. Well done, YouTuber. Um, so Brian from BPS Customs sent this to us quite a while ago. He has a video, I think, called uh, I'm Sending This to GN, I think is what it's called. He did a live stream with it. And um, we got it. He has signed it several times for us, so its value is skyrocketing mm -hmm. right now. And uh, we're going to try and build a micro ATX computer in it. So that is going to be the plan. Um, I think, let's see if the, I need to post the stream link on Twitter. Do you want to, how about you, you give us a, a walk around sure. of it while I do that? Uh, it is not a vacuum cleaner. It looks like a vacuum cleaner from like the 50s. Um, <laughs> but that's not what it is. It is a case. It is a micro ATX case. Um, it's got one big 200 millimeter fan in the front here behind a big sheet of glass with a tiny little bit of mesh at the bottom which doesn't line up with anything handy. That's just the bottom area of, of the case. Um, got this big, uh, I'll call it acrylic. I'm sure people will correct me on that, but this big acrylic I think uh, that's accurate. dome here. And m making sure not to let any air in except for the very top here. Um, these parts I've selected, uh, you know, B450, micro ATX, that, that makes sense. Uh, 850 watt power supply, that's, you know, that'll be adequate for this. I also picked this gigantic Sapphire Nitro Plus card. Um, the reason I selected this, I don't think I told you this, but this is the absolute maximum <laughs> GPU size that will fit in this okay. case. Anything that is even slightly more beyond two slots will not fit in here because okay. it starts bumping up against the uh, it. acrylic. Yeah, so what would you call that? Two and a quarter? Yeah, I really, if, two you, use, if you use this case, it's a two slot case. There's right. three slots in here. 
the third one's just for show. Don't use it. <laughs> uh, it looks like a Star Trek cargo container. <laughs> Actually, and we already did that it one. It kind of does. We yeah. did the the <laughs> space shuttle case. Yeah, we did. Do it. Yeah, we did the Star Trek like. Uh, evacuation ship case, basically. Though it actually does. I hadn't thought of that. It does look exactly like. Oh, there's more logos. Oh, yeah. yeah Did you not you. see that one before? I just saw that. Well, I told you there was more. Yeah. So this, uh, as we said, this is just from our friend Brian over on BPS Customs. I have linked him below uh, if you want to check out. Or I think I did. Let me double check that. Yes, I did. Um, if you want to check out his channel, but. Yeah, we did a. This was he sent it around when we did the studio build with him. So we built a um, rendering and editing PC that was much higher quality than what we're building today. He is very good at water cooling, and that's why we recruited his help for that. But oh, two of them. yeah, at separate times. Yeah, and then he decided to sabotage us by sending us this obligation, and now we're getting we're basically. <laughs> Getting it out of the storage room because mm -hmm. uh, it's been it's been sitting there for quite a while now. So I'm looking forward to it though. Um, okay, so let's see. People, oh, a couple comments. I'll, I'll point these out. So several people have said, "Isn't that the Vetru K2?" I think it is. And this one specifically is called Game KM. I guess if you can show the camera that. And the logo, that skull logo, looks. Very similar. I don't know if it's the same, but similar to the Cool Man logo, mm -hmm. which is another brand we reviewed. I bought the Cool Man three body uh, in Shenzhen and in uh, Huachang Bay, which is, has a big e market. And um, Vetru has a K2. And I think what's happening is there's one supplier and lots of companies that don't actually make stuff are rebranding it, and that's fine. That's how a lot of stuff is is made. Yeah. But uh, so you might see this sold under many names. You might see a Vetru three body at some point. That would if not there's surprise not already me. one. There yeah. may, yeah, <laughs> say like Unaway probably already a retailer in Canada. They probably already have it. Uh, okay, so first of all, we have to address this comment from Syndicate in chat who says, "Whoa, now that's an ugly case." <laughs> well, you haven't seen the LEDs on yet. Actually, to be fair, I haven't either. Does so. that make it better or worse? Well, we'll see because I haven't tried out the LEDs. I, did, I figured that wasn't necessary yeah. to the, uh, the the building process. Let me do a uh, let me. So I haven't really looked at this too much. Patrick did initial research on it. Yes, I, did sh I showed you the best feature. Wait, the button. Yes, Patrick was. There. Can you hear the click? <laughs> uh, so it does have some pretty nice spring buttons. It's got two on the sides that I think are for LED. Nope. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, it's I got go. one on the side. <laughs> it's got one on the side and a place and button for the other that they have basically plastic welded into place. It'd make more sense if it was symmetrical, but there's nothing on the other side. There's but why do? Why do two buttons? I oh, it says slash power. It's supposed to be a power button. Well, but there's a power button up here. Maybe it means power, but for LEDs. <laughs> Maybe, and then they just didn't populate it. It's kind of weird. I don't know what these sell for. We'll look that up in a little bit. The, uh, the wiring situation internally is also a little interesting. Okay. We, we might have to reconnect some things because I unplugged things and then wasn't 100% sure how to plug them back in. Okay, so. gotcha. So this is my first time actually looking at this thing. Um, Believe it or not, we, we do actually do research on these weird cases even before just a simple stream. Uh, and Sorry for the fingerprints. It was mint condition originally. I don't believe that. Uh, <laughs> the, um, the ventilation uh, situation here is a little concerning. So there's some mesh on the top, but it's a lot of a lot of metal and plastic, and not very much hole. So that's not great. Um, there's a lot of plastic here, and we have some holes cut in the sides uh, right here that will do absolutely nothing. Maybe in a negative pressure setup, they'd help with intake. So I'll, I'll just set that aside, and then internally, actually, this you can see why this is going to be a, a problem, because we've got just basically acrylic, and then the GPU. Uh, we'll sit in, I guess, roughly here. Mm -hmm. So well, those, those slits along the side are actually most of the GPU ventilation. 
okay, yeah, yeah. And if the pressure is, uh, I mean, yeah, it'll either be in or out, but it's not going to be, it's not going to be high pressure. There's not going to be anything coming from that yeah. in the front. Yeah, let's show that. People in chat had already pointed this out, too. Uh, here you go. You're welcome. Um, so on the front, we have a 200 millimeter fan. Some quick background or education for everybody on this. I think most people in the audience have heard me say this before, but 200 millimeter fans can be very good or very bad. There's not much of an in-between. So the reason is, and you can apply this knowledge even outside of the weird build we're doing today to cases with 200 mils. The reason is they spin slower, they're large, so they're pretty good with airflow because it's just a large hole that you push air through, and it doesn't need to spin very fast to do that. They have a downside, which is the pressure is bad, uh, I mean, which because it's not spinning very fast, it's big opening, so it's not generating as much pressure, static pressure. So you start putting a piece of glass in front of it. That feels like plastic, actually. Piece of plastic in front of it that looks like glass, and um, and you know suddenly you've killed all the performance of a 200 mil fan, what do you think? I mean, if it looks like glass, then that's all it needs to do, right? <laughs> it might be glass. It might just have warmed up from being in here. <laughs> well, the companies are going to be getting very mixed messages when they send products here, to review we now. Can, we can uh oh. OK, that's glass. Did it scratch? No. OK. <laughs> yeah, th this, this might be worth something one day. <laughs> as raw materials. Um, so when it's melted down. So yeah, we've got a little bit of ventilation there. So you've got this whole 200 mil fan that's pulling only through there. And it's just not going to have the pressure to get over all that, that obstruction. It basically does nothing. And the air is not even in the right place. It's going into the bottom where, I don't know, is there a hard drive mount down there? Yeah. That was hesitant. Well, I mean. If you actually wanted to use this case, uh, I think the first step would be to take the hard drive mount out because okay. there's not a lot of space to work with. Got there. it. Yes. Uh, let me trade places with you. And quick thing, we are doing a, a promo today. So uh, for all of the mouse mats and mouse pads sold during the stream today, any of them on the store on store.gamersnexus.net, Patrick and I will be signing them. We don't do these too often. At most, we've done them a couple times in a year. and. Um, if you want to pick up like our red and black desk-sized mouse mat, it's got this custom red rubber underside that actually is quite hard to source, and the red stitching around the borders for anti-fray, high-resolution print. You can grab that on the store. We will sign it if it is bought during the stream while we're live today, not, not from the archived upload, only while we're live. And uh, we'll get those signed probably on Tuesday, so you have to give it a few days to ship. We've also got, actually, this is one that was signed previously. Uh, by you, me, and Stone for one of the projects we did. Andrew, so, Andrew isn't on there. Andrew's, Andrew's signature is very rare. We put it on a few <laughs> things. So, uh, but yes, this is the blue and black wireframe. One of actually, I think it's our top selling product on the store by um, by quantity. So, uh, if you want one of those, or if you want a normal sized mouse pad, we've got those on the store. Okay, so. Um, I'm going to go through some Super Chats as well, but we're going to get a little further into this first. Super Chats will be on probably about an hour delay today, and we'll, we'll read through all of them eventually. Um, so I see you have pulled the cables. Mm -hmm. Should we, let's go over what cable options there are. I'll let you walk through it. Uh, so we have a Molex connector. I'm pretty sure this is for the LEDs. I did not connect this when I was, um, you know, making sure the case would actually contain our parts. Right. Uh, but the I, I haven't seen the LEDs light up, so I'm thinking that's what they're for. It does say power on it, which is helpful. That's this is Molex power, not Molex data. Okay. Yeah. Um, we've got Com USB. Common. Uh, yeah. <laughs> common common mistake is Molex data. We've got our favorite uh, full USB 3.0 header for one port on the front panel. It's good. Good use of cable there. Um, we've got two separate USB 2.0 headers for one port each, and then a bunch of front panel LED reset power connectors. Two separate audio jacks. 
you know, they can do that. And they, they, apparently, everybody else has a hard time. I don't know that. why. Like NZXT, especially. I think I don't know if they got better on the last case we looked at. I feel like they did. Yeah, I mean, there's some justification for it. They got worse, though. I think arguably because they stopped putting in the splitter. Uh, the jag. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yes. The uh, <laughs> the fractal case we looked at, I think that had discrete. That did. It was mic and headphone, right? Mm -hmm. Three point fives. We've seen a lot of cases do like this. You in one of your scripts for a case review, you referred to it as um, I don't. I think I'm spicing it up a little bit here, but I th it was something to the extent of like an asinine pursuit of minimalism. I think I added the word pursuit, but that was the. But I remember you used I, the word asinine. I said that about an NZXT case. <laughs> I believe it was about an NZXT case. Uh, so at least, at least the game KM or Vetru K2 can do discrete headphone mm -hmm. and mic. Well, that was uh, back when they were putting one USB port Type A that on the also, front panel, which they yes. just, they've. You have a connector that can do two. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to use half of it for no reason other than. It looks clean. Yeah, there's less stuff on the on the top of it. Yeah, as, as less things to catch on fire. Correct yeah. word to use. Yeah, yeah, that's true. They have a fire issue. Um, okay, should we let's pull this apart some more? I guess. Okay, I did. I wrote uh, a game plan here. Yes, I see. It has based three on steps. my experience with the case. Step one is to completely disassemble the case. Ah, okay. Um, and step two is installing the cooler outside of the case. And step three is installing the power supply. And if you work backwards, you can figure out some of the issues I discovered with this. Um, like if you if you were to say install the power supply right now, how would you go about that? I think I would take the side panels off. Yeah. So for people watching, power supply goes down here. I see two options. <laughs> The one that feels obvious is, I think, taking a panel off mm -hmm. and inserting it from the side. I guess you could try and shove it in through the top also. I don't know if it's small enough, but that seems ambitious. Um, is that the correct way to do it? Yeah, do, do, do what you feel. OK. <laughs> uh, but I will say the installing the motherboard and installing the power supply at the same time mm. causes issues because obviously okay. because this is a compact case you can't access the back plate once you have the power uh, supply in there. Oh yeah. Um, so we definitely actually, have to install the cooler first. Okay, that's good to know. I typically when I build a computer I, I like to put the power supply on early mm. just so I can start dealing with cables as early as possible. But in this one, I guess you would want to either do it late or I mean, if we pre-mount the cooler to the board, I guess we're fine. Yeah. Which is what you should do in general anyway. People watching. Uh, this is not immediately obvious to me, the removal of this panel. Okay, so that is not the. I think the front has to come off. Is that. Let's take this off too, because it's got to come out eventually. Did it come with. Oh no, I guess Brian shipped it, so I don't know if it came with instructions when he got it. Uh, it came from Brian with a uh, sandwich baggie full of screws. Okay. I don't know if that's how they shipped it to him. That's not a sandwich baggie. That'd be a very small sandwich. <laughs> it's a snack baggie. <laughs> yeah, that, great. Now we're going to get criticized for uh, our assumed size of a sandwich bag. E. I, uh, Steve, Steve did ask me to let him discover the features of the case. Yeah, so. I'm discovering them. Mm. <laughs> so far, I'm not impressed. What is chat thinking? Let us know what you're thinking so far, and I'll uh, I'll check on the comments in a second here. Somebody so, said you could uh, smoke some meat in it. Some meat? Yeah. OK. <laughs> I mean, it probably gets hot enough. Uh, July 4th is coming up. Yeah. We'll take it to a. We put a 12900KS in there and a 3090Ti. And so I, I put a 3800XT out there. You know. Yeah. That's, that's, it could get a little warm. Uh, so this is your fan mount, maybe radiator. I'm not sure. That might be asking a bit much of it. 
Yeah. Uh, it, it's a lot of metal. I don't know. It looks like it has hole spacing for 120 up here, but it looks like it'd be more at home with like an 80 or something. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but let's set that aside. Okay, so the front should probably come off. Oh, I think these are just decorative. These, these are just these are just yeah, there for okay reasons. Yeah. I have a radiator. You could put oh. you could put extra radiator screws in there. Fan holes. Random holes. <laughs> yeah. Here's the um, so here's the fan. That does look exactly like the Cool Man logo, which again might be just kind of like a generic logo for this type of product, but. Um, inside of the front is, I guess, interesting in that the construction is pretty simple. So uh, they're just using tabs here for the mesh, which, by the way, this mesh, even though it's got holes in it, is also terrible because it's just too much metal, not enough actual breathing. What you really want is the ultra-fine mesh that they're putting on more modern cases now so that this can actually breathe, uh, and the, especially with a 200 mil fan. And the, the, the plastic or the glass at the top is glued on. So that's just glued to the front, which is actually not that uncommon for these. Uh, I don't know, Andrew, can you? Can the doma? I can't, um, I can pronounce it, but I can't read it. So it's got uh, some writing on the inside. Did you translate the, the characters yet? Uh, not on the inside. The front, um, this game KM, it, it actually just, so these characters right here just says, uh, <laughs> it translates to, I mean, like the, the tra I guess we can be, you have a few options. So it, it basically just translates to like play excellent. Or uh, as offered by Google Translate, another option was play out of sight. Which, uh, as in like the slain from the 70s for excellent. So those are your two options for the translation. <laughs> Choose which one you prefer. So yeah, it's just, that's all it says. Play good. So what was it? Wanjia or Wanjia. Uh, and let's see what the chat is saying. OK, so I asked chat what they think. They have made the suggestion of the class, uh, yeah, made the suggestion of just leaving the front off if we were to actually run it. No, 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 you can't do that. There's a, that's no. where the LED control is. You could leave it just like sitting on the table. <laughs> actually, now that I think about it, that we should be fine. This is the cable that I unplugged yesterday, and it wasn't marked for polarity, uh -huh. but this is just a jumper. Oh, um, yeah, okay. I, so I thought just, it was an LED thing. You just but plug it, it into anything, yeah. Uh, yeah, but but you have to plug it into this. Let's show, Let's show the camera. This is definitely not like is hacked this, together a connector. Is it a splitter? Or is it um, a this is just, so this button runs into here, and then this runs into the fan. So this just turns the fan LEDs on and off. Uh, okay. Gotcha. As far as I know, yeah, um, yeah. I think, like, honestly, it would be. It's kind of an interesting case. It's weird, but I feel like if I were to modify this, I would maybe push the glass through, like, punch it out, mm -hmm. and try to find a wide enough fine mesh to put in there. Like, it could be kind of interesting if you turn it into an actual wind tunnel. If it was all just one big mesh circle, yeah. Yeah, that would be much better. I'm gonna look up the. Oh, I see they've got a grounding screw. That's good. Uh, so that's, that's onto the plastic. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, you just ground it into an insulative surface that the the surface resistance is ten to infinity because it never goes to ground. <laughs> infinity just means it's better. Uh, let's see what the price is. Game KM. Or it might be more available as the Vetru yeah, let's try at that this one. point. Vetru K2 case. Let's see. So the Game KM on Newegg has a... Ooh, it's sold by Game KM directly, not by Newegg. So that's going to be, I think, an accurate price. And there's a pink one that is listed for $270. 
Maybe the maybe that one's just more because it's a uh, unique color. Let's see. I wonder if they paint the plastic or if they mold it. Because this is just black plastic. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be standard. But yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. On this website, it is $300 for that one. I'm not seeing many listings. What about the Vetri K2? There you go. Vetri K2 looks much more reasonable. <laughs> All right. The Vetri K2 version of this is $100. You don't get that brand recognition, though. Yes. You, you don't. Do yeah, you don't get the famous Game KM <laughs> brand, uh, the, the Play Excellent brand. Um, I don't know. Uh, how, how do you feel about $100 for the case? How does chat feel? Let us know. And then Patrick will let us know, too. What are you thinking? They'll never guess what I think. <laughs> is it uh, that it is an excellent value? I mean, we just reviewed a, an $80 to $90 case. Yes. From oh, fractal. <laughs> yeah, the fractal um, pop mm. RGB is ninety dollars. It's a lot more material than this. A lot more useful and a lot better. This. So, like, to be fair to them, the tooling is weird enough um, that it is custom tooling, and they're not getting any reuse out of this. So it, it's they have more sunk cost because they can't really reuse it. But that doesn't matter for the consumer. That's one of the things like. We at GN, we don't play games with like trying to justify what the manufacturer is selling it for, because even though you can maybe make it work and understand why it would be a hundred dollars logistically, it's like it just it's irrelevant for the consumer. They don't care if it's a ripoff, then it's a ripoff. Um, so, okay, I see the entire foot comes off. That's gonna have a screw in it. Oh, interesting. Okay. I'm trying very hard to not scratch the signature from Brian, <laughs> the BPS Customs. Uh, so we've got some holes down here for the power supply. Those are actually a reasonable size. Um, it's not strictly necessary to take off both of the side panels. It might make things easier. Um, Just take one or a specific one. Uh, you could take either one. Okay. Um, taking both, it just makes it sit flat. Oh, gotcha. Okay. It. All right, so there's the side of the case opened up. It's at least uh, not too. Okay, yes. Point proven. Yeah. Idea. <laughs> should we should we take off the second one? I guess. Just so we're not. So yeah. Let let people see the full disassembly. I'll let you do that. So okay. I get some super chats. Sure. Someone asked in the chat if uh, if if they buy two mouse pads or mouse mats today, would we? Um, would we sign both of them? The answer is yes. All mouse pads, all mouse mats bought during the stream while we're live, we will be signing them. So if you want to pick one up on store.gamersnexus.net, you can grab it over there. So let's see some comments. People, Frosty says 100 is okay ish. I just bought a Lian Lee clone for 73 USD. Uh, if you want a tube case for $100, okay. If you want a good case at $100, it's not okay. I would agree with that. It's like, yeah. It's kind of like the tank one we built in last week, mm -hmm. where it's like, is it is it worth that much money? Uh, how much do you want the way it looks? Yeah. I would say it would be a good modding platform, but it's not super sturdy. Mm. Uh, you could maybe swap out the glass for your own mesh and stuff like that, but I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, if, if you're, I feel like if you're putting effort into modding something, you're better off modding something more interesting. But, mm. but there could be, I don't know, enough. I feel like this case. I was talking to Patrick before the stream, and we were saying like, yeah, these are rebranded by multiple companies. They're clearly selling to someone who's buying them. And from what I've seen, the market is YouTubers <laughs> who want like yeah. a weird computer case. Mm. So maybe if you're a modder who wants to, like, sort of jump on the bandwagon and get recognition. It would work. Uh, a couple of super chats. So uh, I'm going to go with the last name. Mr. Davidson, uh, I think it's Tarjay, Tarjay, uh, says, 
Thanks to you, I've tinkered a bit with CPU overclocking for the first time in 12 years, but now I'm at a RAM overclock and I've lost the will to live. Any tips? That's the, that's the expected feeling, I would say, that RAM over, If you've lost the will to live because of RAM overclocking, then RAM overclocking is working as intended. Call it's, this number. Yeah. And maybe entitled. That's right. It's very difficult. We need, like, the... Uh, I don't do either of you remember the Nintendo helpline? I mean, we, we need that for RAM overclocking. There was a help. This is a I'm aware story. of it. Yeah, I I had used it uh, for the SNES. There was a helpline they had. You could actually call a person to ask them how to get past a certain level. And like, that's a hell of a job. Like they basically hire you to be an expert in the game because. And how many dollars per minute was that? I, who knows? <laughs> I don't I have no idea. Uh, yeah, that was, um, So, any tips for RAM overclocking? I think the answer, I, really, it's, so it's patience, which translating that into something technical here means really only changing one thing at a time. Because as soon as you, you, you get impatient, I've done this, and you try to change multiple settings at once, now you don't know what the problem is, and it's kind of hard to go back to where you were. Um, so, retry buttons help a lot. Most high-end boards have a retry button. You can just keep hitting that. I, I kind of limit it to three, but it'll reset the sub-timings that you haven't set and try and get it to boot, so that works pretty well. It's a very good trick. If you're not aware of it, use that retry button. Um, I would say probably start... I like to start with frequency and then do timings, so that would be the approach I would take there as well. And then also using, um, what is that software called? The, not MemTest, but the one we use. It used to be called Hi-C, but there's some memory testing software. MemTest Pro might be what we use now. Yeah, I think we still use some variant of has yeah. MemTest in the name. Yeah, I think it's called MemTest Pro. It's like five bucks for the, for the you know, one, at least the one we can use. I don't mm. know about consumer. Um, Some of them built into BIOS you now, some kind of memory testing yeah, functionality. That's normally, I don't think, it's slow. Like, that's good mm. for checking if the memory has got bad components. Um, but for checking an overclock, I would use the application windows, like MemTest Pro, run it, and that's the quickest way to, to root out a failure. It's going to be extreme, though. So, like, it might be stable in a game, not stable in MemTest Pro. But that's what you want, because you don't want to have it work in some games, then later on, not others. So that's my advice. And also, this uh, this super chat reminds me of the sponsor today. This is actually pretty fun. So I might join in on this. I'm not sure yet. I guess we'll see what chat says. It's been a while since I've done an overclocking stream. But HardwareBot is currently running an overclocking competition. So uh, HardwareBot does overclocking competitions for everything uh, extreme overclocking, like liquid nitrogen stuff, dry ice or just standard water cooling. And they're currently doing an OC competition with a lot of prizes. I don't remember how many they're giving away, but they're giving away 12900K SKU CPUs for some of the participants who get high scores. And then they're also, I think they have $10,000 of cash prizes for people who rank high in overclocking. First, first place is pretty high uh, for the, the um, cash prize. So if you want to do some overclocking just for fun and then submit your score to HardwareBot, we have a link below. They are the sponsor for today's stream. And um, that is, uh, the, oh, the interesting thing with that is they have the category set up so that you're not just going to get destroyed by people who use liquid nitrogen. <laughs> so if you don't get liquid nitrogen deliveries to your house and you don't have liquid nitrogen equipment or the people who live with you don't want you for some reason bringing LN2 into the house, then uh, it is set up so that basically anyone using any other form of cooling can compete. So anyway, give them a quick shout out. I don't think liquid, uh, don't use, no. That's why it's a higher temperature, right? It's not even as cold. Uh, liquid oxygen is, mm -hmm. is very high temperature because it explodes. Well, I mean, <laughs> stop being liquid at that point. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Gaseous oxygen, I don't know. Uh, yes, uh, liquid helium, I don't know if they've explicitly ruled out. <laughs> I have a feeling that's against the spirit of the competition. Technically, it's not liquid oxygen. It's four Kelvin cooler. Yeah. Uh, actually, it might be more than that. Uh, next super chat. I'll I'll get a couple of these and I'll get back to the build with Patrick. Get some of his thoughts. I'm seeing some chats, by the way, that say "do it" to compete. So maybe we could do. I'll have to brush up on my OC skills. 
Um, okay. Uh, let's see, next one is from Paul the Bearded One Downing, sent in 10 British pounds. Thank you, Paul. And uh, Paul says, this answers your earlier question, Patrick. Um, let's see, that case is made of uh, acrylonitrile. Oh, it, it keeps going. Okay, I'm gonna show my knowledge of pronunciation of these words. Uh, acrylonitrile, I'm gonna go with butadine uh, styrene, that word I can say. Um, it's got all the fun flavors. In uh, <laughs> yes, don't eat it. Uh, so that is the that is Paul's input on what it's made out of. I don't see any mold marks on there. So, and he says the buttons. He's like this. This guy has got some knowledge about this stuff. Uh, it says the buttons sound like uh, Gong Yuan micro miniature turtle type tax tactile switches. He says it's hard to be certain though without being here. Could be making up all of this. Could be, yes, this could be completely made up. We have no way of verifying it. But I guess if you like the buttons and nothing else about the case, you know what to buy. They are pretty nice. I can get this one out without uh, destroying anything. Let's see. Yeah, we'll That'll be good, yeah, then I'll read some other ones. Uh, I guess people talk about the memory question and how there's so many subtypings. Yeah. There's a couple you can focus on. So for memory, if you do want to play around with tuning the timings, the ones to really focus on would be like, obviously primary timings, all of them, all the primary timings. And uh, TRFC, so refresh cycle, um, the write latency, uh, I think that's normally called TCWL, and uh, four active windows, so TFAW, F-A-W, those are good ones to look at. Command rate is a good one to look at. And CKE, those are the ones I would start with. Looks like a switch. It is a switch. It looks like basically every switch. That's spring-loaded, though, so it feels nice. Yes, it does have a spring in there. No branding on the housing. Let's see if, if Paul, uh, the bearded one, wants to chime in if that's the one he was thinking of. Put it on the coaster on store.cameraxis.net. Um, Andrew, do you want a light for the top of the camera? Is that useful, or you don't need it? Uh, I can put it on as a backup. Uh, it's just, I remember, uh, I forgot we can actually do that with this camera. <laughs> but yeah, these two lights are working well. Okay, if it's not needed, then don't worry about it. Okay, uh, next one is from me. Not me, but someone named me. Uh, they sent in a $1.49 and it's a super chat sticker of a coin with a star on it, so thank you. Um, I haven't seen that one before. Night Sun sent in $5, said, my RTX 3050 only has a PCIe 8X connection and I'm running an i5-10600K on Z590. Is PCIe Gen 3 still good enough? Yes. For an RTX 3050, you're, you're fine. You're, you're, well, I With eight lanes. Yeah, eight lanes, eh, maybe. You're, you're losing a little bit for sure, actually. Never mind. Good call on that. Yeah, if you... Yes. I had switched, I had changed the question in my head. PCIe Gen 3 on by 16, no problem. PCIe Gen 3 on by 8, you're going to be losing some performance. I don't know how much, though. Um, my gut instinct is that hardware combination of a 10.6 with a 3050, you're not dropping too much, but... Uh, is there any kind of like bandwidth test that would be easy to run? Oh, yeah, you could run a bandwidth test. Well, yeah. The problem with the bandwidth tests is they grossly overstate how much it matters normally. But mm -hmm. FutureMark, 3DMark now uh, by UL has a PCIe bandwidth test, but it does tend to, to over-exaggerate like how much it matters. Um, let's see. Next super chat says, GN calendar when? I have no current plans to do a GN calendar. <laughs> Take photos of all the weird cases we do a live stream with and then sell a calendar for it. And then, then donate all the proceeds to e-waste recycling. Uh, next super chat, uh, Mr. Indecision says, it reminds me of my Coke can hi-fi from when I was, I guess like a sub. Oh yeah, it does kind of look like a subwoofer. Mm. From when I was, and then the chat ends. Rest in peace. <laughs> Mr. Indecision couldn't decide how to finish the super chat. 
That's the name of the person who posted it. Uh, okay, so yeah, we definitely want to mount the cooler first. Yeah. Um, Just make sure which way it'll fit. Do you want to uh, take some chats or super chats and I'll mount that? Sure. Uh, let's see. Are you guys really signing the mouse mats? Yes. <laughs> yes. As opposed to. I, we're going to make we're Andrew we're sign our names. lie about it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we, we've done it before for um, streams, basically, only. I think there were, there were a couple launches where we did like 100 of them as a special thing. But yeah, Patrick and I will be spending quite a bit of time on Monday or Tuesday probably signing uh, all the mouse pads and mouse mats bought during this stream. So it helps us out a lot. It helps us. We actually, I don't know if you saw it, you were on copy for the email, but we are getting a purchase going for a large piece of testing equipment that will be used in, I'll leave it to reviews. Uh, I'm not going to specify further than that, but it has lasers. So if you buy mouse pads and mouse mats and we sign them, that will help soak that cost. Okay, um, I will install the cooler if you want to. Okay, I didn't see that RAM either. I, think I just saw oh, it on there. Oh, okay, sure. I stopped at uh, Mr. Indecisions and then just as always um, read ahead of the comment. Yeah. Uh, Matt G, uh, donation. Thanks for all the great content over the years. Would love to one day see a blackout version of the GN wireframe mouse mat. Hmm. What do you think, Andrew? Yeah, he's nodding. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll definitely make more mod mat designs. Oh, did you say ma mod mat or mouse mat? Uh, mouse mat. Did okay. I say mod mat? You I just did, but the first time <laughs> you okay. said mouse mat. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it wouldn't be too difficult. It would be a skew tracking challenge. But I, I definitely, every time we see notes like that, I keep kind of track of what people want. Because on the, um, the red and black one that we made, that was specifically because a lot of people were requesting red and black. So the more people request a certain color, the more likely we are to do it. Do you want this overhanging the RAM? I think it has to be. Yeah. Um. I don't think we're going to have clearance otherwise. This will probably not. This probably exceeds the. This is a cool cooler. Oh, yeah, I think we, we picked that because we're not sure if we're going to use it for something else and it looked cool, so we wanted to. Yeah, I kind of like it on this. camera. So this is a Be Quiet cooler. Um, there's the logo. Where's the. Box is on the floor. Oh, thanks. What's the, what's the model? Dark Rock TF2. That name's not being used. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shots fired. <laughs> they, well, they, they didn't update. The hacking is supposedly less prevalent. Great, yeah. Let me turn the AC off. Uh, donation from Matt. Enjoy some tater tots after the stream, Patrick and Patrick. Um, <laughs> speaking of Star Trek, did you get the Roddenberry Mark Nine tricorder. Oh yeah, I do actually yeah. have that. Yes. Uh, look cool next to the escape pod and shuttlecraft cases. Yeah, I could. Yeah, I should bring that in and put that with the shuttle case. We did get that a while ago. Thank you. Um, okay, I'll mount this. Uh, Camaro eighty five. Uh, with my 9900K plus 3090 playing at 4K, wondering if there is a reason to upgrade PCIe Gen 3 versus 4 slash 5. When you test 4090, please test in 4K so people can decide to just go 4K or need to upgrade the whole system. We usually do test in 4K. Uh, yeah, we yeah GPs we always have 4K testing, so that's already there. We um, we typically. I don't know if it's appreciated maybe as much as it should be, but we typically do 1080, 1440, and 4K for GP reviews. So you take three resolutions and you multiply them against at least a minimum of six games, but we normally run more. It's just how many we publish. And then you multiply that by the number of passes. So yeah, it gets tested. 4090, we're definitely doing 4K testing. Like, it would be pointless not to. Maybe even higher. Uh, before you continue, this is about 10 centimeters tall. Just for anyone wondering, actually, actually with that bump right here, it's more like 11. And that's before putting a fan on it, although I th think the fan is intended to go in the middle. There's two fans. Oh. So okay. if we, we can skip one if we have to. Um, All right. Are they different sizes? Nope, same fan. I did. I had the. Oh, no, it's not. 
the yeah the, the clips the, the you know loser mode instructions uh, if, if you need to I, I was just following those I, I, I have no shame uh, okay so the the fans are it's like we're, we've switched to a, a be quiet cooler look instead of the case the mm -hmm. case is here uh, I am now more interested in the cooler which is a block of aluminum the fans actually have different um, a different chassis design and different hole placement. So let me show those off. So you can see one's a little more squared internally and one's completely round and the hole spacing is different. So one of these is going to is intended for in between and one's intended for on top. I just check what they recommend. You want to take the next one? Uh, yeah, so, uh, so we, have, we have a European viewers saying let's try the pronunciation again but you're making me very nervous if you're telling me to try the pronunciation of your name again I'm, I'm not gonna do it you're not gonna get me with that one <laughs> German for you silly child uh, is my that teacher, the name uh, in German oh. uh, my teacher used to call me that thanks for the ever improving content yeah Steve's the German expert he can do I am not an expert oh this I know this is one of the ones where I know how to say it but I don't know what it means so I probably shouldn't say it <laughs> I did I did take German for four years, but I haven't really used it much, and I've just translated it into Chinese, which I did. Yeah, okay. So that is all it means. It just means you silly child. Oh, he, that's, what he, that's what they're saying, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. It's just from Dudumaskind. <laughs> you got your wish. <laughs> um. I've, yes, I try not to. Even if I could pronounce it, I try not to say words I don't understand. Uh, donation from Kevin. Just bought a GN mouse mount. I'm super excited. Thank you, GN, for your hard work. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, mouse pad will be on the way on probably early next week, we'll see. Uh, Megalodon, uh, just got my coasters in, and after running some benchmarks, my drinks are on average three degrees Celsius cooler and one decibel quieter. Nice. That is a lot more testing than we did on our coasters. Um, I would be ashamed to say that, but somehow I'm not. That is uh, Andrew spilled some beer on them for uh, B-roll shots. Yes, right? yes, we That's did testing. do. We did. I, I mean, we genuinely do a lot of testing for yes. them, but it's not noise and thermals. <laughs> 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 we did do a lot of uh, like color retention and um, endurance testing on them. Uh, Logan, uh, first ever YouTuber purchase. Can I have a happy face on my mouse pad with your signature? We cannot personalize. Sorry, we don't have a way to do that. Um, basically, the, the orders go to our distributor, and he helps me sort of just get the right products and the right amount of them. But then as far as who they go to specifically and like personalizing it, we don't have a, a system for that. Sorry about that. But we will put our signatures on it. Yeah, we can do a smiley face on one of them and see who it goes to. <laughs> Just nobody else buy one, and then it'll yeah. make sure to go to the right person. <laughs> um, Mr. H, uh, hi, Steve. My wife knows you as the one with the good hair and wants <laughs> to know your secret. The secret um, is some days you try harder than others with your hair, and then you hope that people notice on those days, and you hope they don't notice on the other ones when you just put Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut out in them. <laughs> Um, CHR Zero has bad news. What? Uh, Nintendo Helpline was a lot of dollars. Uh, source, me, who had no concept of money when I was 10, and oh. my parents, who very much did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that I was not aware of. I remember um, we called them because I got stuck in Legend of the Seven Stars uh, on one of the levels inside like a castle where you have to jump either a higher or further distance. And we weren't aware that you could push, I don't remember if it was like Y and A at the same time and jump higher and further. Mm -hmm. And so we called and they knew that immediately and they knew what level it was on and everything. It was like, it was really impressive customer service. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm they not they surprised. didn't have to transfer you to their <laughs> department elsewhere and yeah, they don't like, go up the chain. They don't do the Spectrum Time Warner cable charter yeah. to you where they bounce you around until you hang up. <laughs> like, I'm not surprised they got rid of it. Like, it, that probably was very difficult to staff for. 
Especially yeah, I wonder how you launch. train for that. Yeah, like, have you played all of the games? No? Get out of my office. <laughs> um, David, uh, love your content. Helped me and helped me help my friends. I know you said you're signing mouse pads. Does that include mod mats? Uh, mod mats we have a separate SKU for if you want to sign one on the website. And, and that's all the time? That is all the yeah. time, yeah. Uh, but mouse mats we do not have a separate, like, buyable SKU. So when we sign them during the streams, um, that's pretty much the only time you can get it unless there's some other special promo for a mouse mat. But for a mod mat, you can always get it as long as it's in stock. Uh, donation from Martin, thank you. And, uh, and Justin, no messages for either of those. OK, thank you. Um, What's, uh, let me ask Chad a question, and then you can read some of those while I get this install finalized. So does anyone have thoughts on ignoring the case, ignoring the star of the show <laughs> for the thing that I've started to care more about? What's everyone's thoughts on, uh, on this cooler? Like, look at this thing. So it was about 10 centimeters without a fan. I can't get a, a quite as accurate a measurement since it's now mounted. Comes up to, a, I mean, I guess you had 25 millimeters. So it's about 12 and a half, 13 with the fan. And that is still smaller than a lot of tower coolers, which are um, commonly 150, 155. So you're still in better shape there, but it is quite large. I, this is not a small form factor cooler. So I'm curious what chat thinks about it. Uh, it here's a follow-up question of, um, would you all be interested in a roundup or series of reviews of downdraft coolers like this one? Because Mike can take care of that for us. He does. He's our cooler technician. I would just set him up on a, do the, basically just behind the scenes for you, but typically I'll do like what we call test engineering on that, which is designing the test case. And then he does test execution, which is very detail oriented work and uh, he could knock out a bunch of them if people actually care but I don't know question for you all is do you buy downdraft coolers or are you interested in them um, I, I really want that cooler to fit in the case if it doesn't we have the emergency backup stock cooler oh, I have like not that. I have not test fit it so yeah fortunately it's only a few screws um, some people saying it's really big uh, yes. on the motherboard. I, I think it's, I mean, those numbers, you can take them with a grain of salt, but the wattage they were advertising on there was pretty high. Um, yeah, it says 230 watt TDP. Yeah, um, that's very high for the, the watt numbers, you know this, but just for chat is, uh, they all test it a different way, so 230 watts means different things to different companies. But that is very high. A lot of people saying it looks like it's sagging. Um, <laughs> I mean, it might it, be. Yeah. It's hard to get the angle it is. perfect on there. I mean, I could bend it. Like, it's just metal. Mm. So <laughs> it is sagging, though, a little bit uh, down over here. The fan might, I, I don't If as long as it doesn't. Make you nervous. As long as it doesn't clip the fan blades on the it, if we're even putting the internal fan it's on. It's not sagging anymore. I'll put it on after I confirm if it fits. What else is chat saying about it? Uh, like a lot of droopy vent comments. Uh, it seems like the main takeaway here. Oh, about the top one? Mm -hmm. it's, it's not the weight making it sag. It's just a lot of angles and yeah. heat pipes without support under them. It's hard to get that. Perfect. Which is why bending it works, but then you, you risk damaging a heap, cracking a heat pipe and losing the liquid. Uh, it's a wonderful ripoff of a Noctua cooler. Is it? I mean, it's a downdraft cooler. Ripoff is kind of a generous phrase to use for coolers, I feel like. There's uh, so many ways to do it. Downdraft makes no thermodynamic sense. They should be updraft out of the top of the case. That, that's that is... Well, I wanted to mention anyway that, like... That's a silly comment, uh, which I'll get to in a second, but... A tower cooler would maybe make sense here, like if you could get front to back, yeah. but this is all glass in the front, and I, we could stick a fan in the back here. The fin orientation isn't really oriented out at the back, but... I mean, yeah, this... We want to use this cooler. It's going to fit this This case, you're, you're doomed from the get-go, thermally, with this case. So, uh, actually, downdraft works much better here than front to back because like Patrick's saying, I think 
Arctic makes like a 93 mil front to back, that would fit. But there's not much front here in terms of airflow because of the fan, uh, if we put the panel back on. And the top at least has a lot of holes cut in it, so we've got direct access to cool air. It will probably work very well in spite of Game KM's best efforts to block air. So there's that. Now as far as it should be updraft because thermodynamics, heat rises, it's like I, I get kind of sick of seeing the comments about like heat rising because if you actually test it, it's functionally irrelevant. What matters is you're pushing air through a fan spinning at 1500 RPM, heat rising, uh, the, the molecular movement is something like a 4% increase for every 25 degrees Celsius air temperature increase. Compared to a fan that's blowing like what, however many cubic feet per minute, it's just it doesn't really come into play. Uh, I understand what you're saying though, but downdrafts here will work pretty well because one of the upsides of downdrafts, they are, they're always limited on surface area. So you've got that downside. But one of the upsides is that they push air straight down into the VRM as well. So if you have a VRM that gets kind of hot, it forces air movement down into it, which is nice. And if, you know, you pull the air, you kind of get some air movement in the same area, but um, just depending on the case layout, it, it really, I mean, you could flip the fan over, I guess. But um, I understand what they're, I think what they're trying to say is, it's not just heat rising, but it's also the perception of you're pushing the hot, the effectively the heat energy off of the fins and into the motherboard mm. and, and sort of where the CPU is therefore isn't that worse and the answer is well not really if there's enough surface area it just it spreads it it dissipates it so much and it's better overall than uh, no movement so um, those are my thoughts on that but I understand the the point it just normally doesn't really matter okay uh, I did my job Okay. The cooler is on there. All right. I is will. Am take, I going back to it? Okay. Yeah, I'll let you take over for a <laughs> minute. <laughs> and uh, it's starting to get hot in here without the AC on. I'm gonna need to drop it down into like the 60s before we start streaming. We should bring those Arctic uh, USB fans in here. <laughs> the little ones you can yeah. plug into the PC. <laughs> yeah. Like stick your fingers in. And <laughs> Arctic sound. You'd probably break the fan before yeah. you hurt your finger. <laughs> Arctic sent us all these small fans on little bendy, bendy we, I think straws. we've used them on streams before. Have we done LN2 stuff? No, not yet. But they are. They would be very good for LN2 for getting the, the gas away. Well, now you have to compete. <laughs> so we're equipped for it. <laughs> That's why. That's yeah. what we've been waiting for. We've been waiting two years to do another LN2 stream because we were waiting for Arctic to come out with a fan on a bendy stick to get the nitrogen gas away from the test bench. <laughs> Those guys are geniuses. Let's see. Uh, is this a dust filter right next to all those unfiltered holes on the top? Um, not really. Like, it's, it's a, so it kind of, it looks like one, but um, there's actually no filter here, it's just the normal mesh. I mean, I guess it, it will filter dust. I don't think that's their intended use, <laughs> but. How many people are freaking out at me for looking like I was going to put the fan in upside down? Oh, hopefully, hopefully a lot, because then our engagement will be higher. Mm. Uh, don't put second fan before RAM. That's maybe a good point, yeah. actually. Yeah, it's, that was a stick <laughs> Thank you, early. thank you for the point. Uh, where is it? Uh, from Gaudasan, written in all caps. You got me all mixed up here. My careful plans. Just turn on the AC. No. You've all made yourselves very clear. There will be no AC in these streams. Who sabotaged whom? Uh, so Brian from BPS Customs sent us this case and therefore sent us the obligation to build in it, which is sabotage. Uh, he's linked in the description if you're curious. OK. Um, so let me let me get some uh, let me get some super chats. Where did you stop? Do you remember? Um, that one. Oh yeah. Oh no, you got that one too. Uh, the I like M M A T X I T X cases. Okay. Next one is from uh, Kalash Nikov, who sent ten dollars. Thank you. 
It says, I like micro ATX and ITX cases, micro ATX, uh, because they feel more purpose built, whereas your typical tower ATX case is just an unoptimized, open, and messy compartment. Sadly, small cases are engineered terribly. I think I, I agree with a good deal of that. Um, micro ATX, at least ITX, is definitely very purpose built. Yeah. Because you have to think about everything, because, or you should, if you're the case designer. Uh, because it's going to be a lot of stuff that does not um, that is not easy to build with. Next one, John's Gaming and Tech says, "Have a good weekend, gentlemen. Happy Fourth. Thank you. You too." Uh, Carlos Gomez says, "5600X and 3080CP bottleneck for 1440P AAA gaming?" Question mark. I think I understand the question. Um, it's very efficient. I like and respect that. Uh, it's like, how do I have as few verbs as possible? Uh, extremely efficient. So, bottleneck for 14, CPU bottleneck for 1440p gaming. Um, that depends. So, the 3080 is pretty damn good at 1440. Something like Cyberpunk, well, actually, they've updated it, but originally, Cyberpunk, the answer would be yes. Now, the answer, I think, is no. They've pushed that to the GPU. Microsoft Flight Sim, I don't know how CPU bound that is these days. Microsoft Flight Sim seemed like it just was struggling <laughs> Yes. in general. It was when we tested it a lot. Um, so I think the uh, I think the answer to will it bottleneck is it depends. But if you're playing with like max graphic settings on 1440p, you're probably hitting the GPU harder still. Uh, so that's I think you're fine. Next one. Martin uh, Heinlu says, can you move the fan to the other side of the front panel? This is, a good, this is a great question. Can you move the fan to the other side of the front panel to give it more space? And then goes on to say, maybe drill the edges of the front panel for better breathing. So we could drill the edges of the front panel. Um, we're just building this for fun, though. So it, it, you know, we won't do that. But the, I'll let you take the question on, on why, whether or not it's possible on this. But um, explaining, you know. Yeah, so I mean, the first issue is just that the LEDs are going to get covered up. That's why you see cases mounted, or fans mounted on the outside of uh, cases frequently. So if we move this to the inside, there's going to be metal in front of it. If you're not worried about that, then you could probably make it work, but this is also a 200 millimeter fan. Mm. So it's not just normal fan screws, you know, these are basically radiator screws and you know, right. you're gonna have to. You're gonna thread them in backwards to these holes. It's gonna be. It might work, but it could be. It could be a, yeah. a one time. You can change the threads once, normally. So you're you're basically modding it if you put the fan on the inside here. The and did you? Uh, I was reading chat, so I didn't notice. But did you talk about um, why? Uh, why moving it further in might help. That's what you talked about in the fractal review, but. Uh, maybe not so much here, but um, we we can probably do some more like direct experimentation on this. I don't I don't know if that would merit a whole video, but if you move the fans back inside the case, then they aren't uh, they they can pull air across the full mm. surface area of a mesh fronted case. They're not just pulling air directly from the uh, the circle of mesh that's right in front of the fan. So uh, we've seen. You know, I, I can't put a number on it, but that is, it does in help. some situations, yeah, more it, helpful. It, it for affects the um, it affects the fan RPM too. You put extra resistance up against it. Uh, yes, the circle of mesh. I like that's. I th I feel like this is a. Uh, I feel like the circle of mesh should be my Lion King sequel. Um, Let's see. There were a couple good questions in the normal chat. I, I paused the, where I was to get them. Um, let's start with this one. Uh, Divina says, the Zalman flower designs were pretty. So the Zalman flower designs, for those of you who haven't seen them, those were like iconic. I have several of them. Um, I don't know if they went to early 2000s, definitely mid to like 2009-ish. They're popular. And uh, they also were pretty because they came in red after you installed them. <laughs> Figure that one out. Uh, lots of exposed copper, very sharp. And then the fan was in the middle. 
They were pretty early to the LED game also. I, I did like those coils. I don't know if they were good by today's standards, but well, by today's standards, no. I don't know if they were good then. Um, let's see, where were the ones? I wanted to get a couple. One of these headers is a an audio header, not a USB header. Uh, okay. All right, so this was a good question. Uh, S S Bart two thousand three said, "Can I trust the bottleneck calculator websites?" I'm not really sure. Um, so power supply calculator websites, I'll comment on first. Kind of, <laughs> it depends on who runs it. There's like a few Cooler Master or someone, some PSU manufacturer maintains. Those are okay. It's best so for bottleneck calculating, bottle or um, power calculating. It's best to just check reviews, and this isn't like a self-plug. You check someone else's reviews, I don't care. But you're going to get the best re result by doing that, where you're basically looking for, um, you just try to piece together the picture yourself. You look at a few charts, look at what they use, and compare it to your own. And uh, since in benchmarking, all publications that do this properly should be isolating the variables for either the CPU or the GPU for comparison. So what you do is you check the performance of the CPU you have in the CPU charts and see where it starts getting limited. Check the performance of the GPU that you want in the GPU charts. That'll give you a full picture and it's trustworthy because you verified it yourself against the data from um, testing. Power supply is the easiest thing to do is take the maximum observed power under load from a GPU and from the CPU you're combining, put them together. It's unlikely you'll be in that scenario, but it's possible, so you should account for it. Uh, and you can get those numbers from benchmarks also. So that was a good question. Um, where was the other one I wanted to get? Uh, oh, someone's saying Flight Sim is definitely still heavy on the CPU. So that's good to know because it was pretty rough on CPUs when it first came out. Yeah, it was. It's a weird. Uh, I'm sure it's rough on storage in some way too. We don't benchmark storage. This comment says, "What's the idea for the stream?" Title's a bit cryptic. So the title is live. Another YouTuber sabotaged us micro ATX build. Uh, so the stream is a micro ATX build in a case that Brian BPS Customs sent over to us. Hold on. Um, let BPS me... Customs. There you go. Yeah. There's another one. Yes. Wait, is there another one? Yes. Where is it? On the inside bottom of the motherboard train. Yeah, he went insane. This is what I meant when this I said is, there, there's, there's some, more. This is a madman. <laughs> He needs to be taken off the streets. I think we have this is some, dangered. We have some uh, some vintage stickers from Brian. You know, we could decorate this some more if we. I wouldn't be surprised if, like, on the the uh, traffic lights where he lives, it just says BPS Customs all over it. <laughs> like, get on a random ski lift and you see BPS Customs stickers all the way up. Yeah, these, are, these are the kind of where you can't peel them off without uh, leaving a big yeah. streak of glue on there. You're right. Or, in the instance of this case, potentially peeling the paint off with it. Uh, goofball1 underscore says, what games do you play, Steve? Uh, last time I answered this, the answer was Heroes of Might and Magic 3, which came out in 1999, and that is still the answer currently. Um, anything for you lately, Patrick, games? Uh, I've been playing Neon White, but that doesn't mean I'm any good at it. It just means I've been playing it. Um, yeah, that's about it, honestly. <laughs> what, uh, trying to think if I've seen anything in lately that's interested me. Modern stuff. Stray looked kind of fun, but I don't really feel like playing it. I'm sure you've seen that one, though, right? The was, I think so, yeah. Or is that a cat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if there's any FPSs I would really want to play right now. I like, I like Unreal Tournament, but that's kind of... Dead project. Well, don't don't worry. They are making another Elder Scrolls game. Have they now official, confirmed that? Official announcement. Yes. They're also making another Fallout game. Oh, great. These are all official announcements. Shocking. Yeah. Bethesda continues to print money. More at 11. <laughs> yeah. In 2040. Don't forget about Star Citizen. Oh, no. Star, um, not Star Citizen. Star. Not Starbound. Star... What the hell is it Field. called? Field. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Clearly, we're all very excited about it. Uh, 
It looks kind of, they, they showed you can do like ship customization and stuff. I did see, I don't know if it was intended to reference Star Citizen, but I did see they made a comment about you're not going to be able to do like clean planetary to space transitions. Mm -hmm. I think that's more of a No Man's Sky thing. They're, they're having to. Okay, is that what they're combating? The comparison to No Man's yeah, Sky? Yeah, people like No Man's Sky now. Yeah. It's it was so hated when it yeah. came out. Yeah. Uh, and I was particularly frustrated with it because I remember I was in London the first time I'd been in the UK for a press event, and I was on the day after the event where I was, it was just like an exploring the area day, and there was this set of No Man's Sky, like 4K screenshots exclusive we got, and I had to rush back to the hotel room to publish it. It did quite well. And then everybody hated the game. <laughs> I was like, wow, I'm not going to do that again. Like, that's just, there's kind of the, you got to, that was when I learned there's a line you draw for, nope, this is, this is going to be mostly a day off. I don't care if I get 10 exclusive screenshots of a video game. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see, I want to make some comments on the build in a second because I have some thoughts how I see it assembled partly. But let's start with, um, Justin Kelly sent in $4.99, thank you, and says, might be a good $100 spend. That's the cost of the case, if you missed it earlier. If you mod the crap out of it over six months, like Jay's two cents. I don't know if that's a burn on Jay or if it's just a statement of fact, <laughs> but uh, I think it's accurate that it, it could be cool if you spent $100 on it. Not the Jay part. I have no comment on that part. <laughs> okay, Jay, we good. Um, Mr. Seven Digit says, What's the worst thing you reviewed? Excellent question. I, the longer I think about it, the more I'll change my answer. Um, I don't know. It depends if you're, if we're looking only from value, like, like impacts the consumer the worst, then it would probably have to be something like a GT 1030 DDR4. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know, the Enermax coolers are pretty bad, the ones that fill with gunk. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if they were the worst because they start okay. Um, do you have any thoughts There's on the stuff you've worked on? things that we that have made manufacturers not like us. Uh, A lot of things. There's those MSI M.2 heat sinks. That oh, yeah. Has, Oh, yeah, MSI was really shady with that. They tried to recruit people to prove us wrong, and then those people proved us right. So, <laughs> Self-Own by MSI. Uh, I, was, I remember that. We were getting contacted by another tech reviewer at the time, and he was like, MSI asked us to prove you wrong on your testing, and it came out the same. I was like, okay, did you tell them? And he was like, yes. They didn't want us to go any further with the testing. Uh, yeah, that, that was their heat, they called it a heat shield. Mm -hmm. It was one of the earliest M.2 heat sinks, like these things, except theirs, uh, it was not aluminum or copper. It was actually, I can't remember if it was stainless steel or tin. I think it had both materials in it, but I think it was tin. Uh, not particularly conductive. And the thermal pad didn't fully contact the drive either. I think it had one, but it didn't contact properly. And what was happening, was uh, because it it was a bracket shape, like a staple, basically. It came over the edges of the SSD and it trapped the heat underneath it. So what we discovered was if you have a two-sided M.2 SSD, very common at the time for higher capacities, um, it would trap all the heat underneath and bake the components. And uh, so basically it, it was better if you took the thing off. MSI, very upset about that. Um, we had some both of MSI and me with them had some, some extremely um, angry emails back and forth. And I think that was when they learned like, t to step off when media starts challenging them because it just triggers further. And it triggers investigation. You're like, why are you so sensitive about this? There's got to be more. So anyway, yeah, that, that was a... Uh, I would say that's up there in one of the worst products I've reviewed. You, you gave me time to think, too. I, we don't need to dwell on this, but um, those Intel HEDT CPUs with four cores. Oh, yeah. Those, those were bad. Just the stupidest possible product. Someone's very hurt in the audience right now. No, nobody. <laughs> they've all like sold those off for 
re-etched the IHS to pretend like they're a different CPU and scammed oh. somebody on eBay. I, like, that's <laughs> all they're good for. 7740X. Mm. That was the name of one of them. Uh, I think uh, that might have been the i7. The i5 was the worst one. It was So you buy an X299 motherboard, expensive board with an expensive socket. You put an HEDT CPU in it, and it's a rebranded i5, like 7600K or whatever it was at the time. Um, I don't remember if you even gained PCIe lanes. Uh, Probably not. I don't think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the only advantage was you had the upgrade path option to <laughs> keep using your X299 board with CPUs that they then um, basically rebranded for the next three years before killing entirely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I what? have one. Oh, yeah. I have a 10920X. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's one of the less common ones, but... I think we both had that same feeling about the HEDT CPUs, where it's like they're fun yeah. to have. Yeah, it's I want all those lanes, but they're I don't very, need them, but I want them. Right? Yeah, it's like they're not particularly useful. All right, so let's show the power supply installs going in now. Sorry, that doesn't have the that can come back out. <laughs> no, um, I think they get the idea. Uh, so let's talk about this cable situation. I'll, I'll let you take over for that. Uh, this is why you might want to take the hard drive cage out if you were to actually sincerely use this case. Let's show it from this side. Also, you know, I'm... This is all secure. I'm not going to hate on Molex. Uh, what? Well... You're going to hate on Molex. But what? What is, what is the point of it? This... So we've got three pins connected. Let's check. We have uh, on the GN mod mats, which are low inventory on the store, we have a Molex pin out right here. Um, so let's check which three cables they give us. So they give you... The trapezoidal part oriented that direction. They actually connect uh, 12. 5 volts oh, 12. and ground. So Both they're ground. they're isolating the... 12 oh, volts, wait. but it's not actually connected. Oh, so this doesn't have a 12 volt. Yeah, right? yeah. but this does. Okay, but then I, we lose a ground. All right. I hadn't looked at this. So they're just—it's just a changer. Like they're just changing the pin out, right? Why would you do that? I don't. It's like if you don't want to custom make this cable because it's made in the millions. But and all it's all it's doing is just making so, like these are the only two pins connected. There's, there's probably an obvious reason for this that I'm not thinking of. But Let's show this yeah. a little clearer. So this says power. Uh, and I don't know. This it says something important in Chinese. Can you can put on So this, um, as Patrick was saying, you can see the, the pinout is left to right is going to be 12 ground, ground 5 volts, 12 ground, ground 5 volts DC, of course. And then the adapter over here is just getting rid of, so we don't have 12 wired. There's no physical wire going into it. Uh, but there's a pin here mm -hmm. to go to nowhere. And then we've lost a ground pin on this thing. So it's just 5 and ground, which is maybe just a I don't know, maybe it was cheaper for them than making a cable here that was five in ground. Or maybe they want the daisy chain ability. Maybe it makes it disconnect easier. All I was going to do is complain about the fact that now we have to put a whole Molex cable onto the power supply, which now we have that much less space in the bottom of the case just because we need to power the LEDs. Yeah. That's strange. Well. But Fortunately, it's the only weird thing about this case. Yeah, everything else is normal. Everything else is great. Excellent case, really good. <laughs> I should uh, install this from the other side also, because there's only one side of the motherboard that has cable cutouts on it. Oh, thank you. Someone says it says not a... Wait, I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> Although I didn't say what I was saying mm -hmm. in English, so maybe they do. It's just a voltage reducer. Is that all? I mean, is it? Is there a I mean, I guess so, but a voltage reducer in the sense that, well, but is it though? There's no 12 volts wired, right? 
Yeah, there's there's nothing active in here, as far as I can tell. Maybe if it, it bridges it out, I don't know. I guess maybe. And it, it doesn't know. cross anything over. So. Yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> anyway. Uh, let's see. What is chat saying? Yeah, just to be clear, that's just for the LEDs. So, uh, as far as we can tell. Uh, uh, someone named Lon says, that, "Hey, I've seen this in my local PC shop." Yeah, it seems. Leave it there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> leave it there. Uh, what the? Uh, this is me actually reading exactly what it says. What the frick, Steve? You can't buy quality products? Space question mark? You gotta buy all from AliExpress. This was sent to us by BPS Customs, and we thought about buying it. First, but. yeah. First of all, there's so there's so much cognitive dissonance in that question. Like, AliExpress also has quality things, first of all, and we just reviewed the Fractal Pop like two days ago, which we said was a pretty good quality product. You should check the review out if you want to see a good case that costs actually less than this one. It's so, it's like when we, we do a video on a low end thing or a high end thing, and people are like, why don't you cover the opposite one? And it's like, well, just because the current thing is not that doesn't mean we don't. Uh, we uh, need a power supply swap here. Oh, really? Is it too large? No, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know how hev heavily we've used this one, but uh, this cable has given up the ghost. Oh, the power I cable? Yeah, yeah, I don't want to plug this in. <clears throat> this right here. Oh, oh, I just, oh, yeah, okay. We need to, um, we need to label this and make sure it's, it doesn't go into use. Where did that come from? It doesn't did matter. You, did you show? Yeah, let me give yeah. Andrew a better shot. Did you get a shot, Andrew? Okay. So, I mean, just to be clear, we could obviously repin that, but um, it's not worth doing right now, so we'd maybe just swap the power supply. Okay. Still no IO shield. Yeah, we don't do those here. I don't uh, even think that, yeah, we threw that away a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's nice when they come with the board, but otherwise it's just not worth the trouble. Let's see. Okay. Next one is from Brian the Gamer. Two dollars, no message. Thank you. Um, next one, Chase. Five dollars. Thank you for sending that in. Chase says, snagged a sweet red mouse mat. In your opinion, should I upgrade my 2080 Ti to a 3080 Ti or wait to see next gen from AMD and NVIDIA? It's such, it, it is a very common question. And this happens every generation. And it's kind of hard to answer uh, in, a, in a concrete way without no, in this situation, maybe this, the same answer I normally rely on, which is if you are currently happy with how your computer performs, and if when the 40 series or whatever launches and they don't have stock for months, um, you will remain happy with what you have, then just keep it. There's no point in just upgrading because just something new came out, but if you feel like you could actually get value out of that, whether that's uh, sentimental value of you get a fun project and you just need something different to do, like build a computer to have some fun, or whether it's functional value, like performance. But if neither of those things is immediately present and you, you're you like, you know what, I'm actually not upset about my frame rate in games, then don't upgrade. It's a waste of money. Um, if you're at a point where you're like, I I'm not too happy with the performance right now in my 2080 Ti and I would like better, then now seems like a pretty good time because the prices have cratered for GPUs and the 40 series is not going to stick with the 30 series prices as 30 is going out. 40 is going to launch at the new MSRP. It'll stay there or higher. So that would be my analysis of it is uh, you know, if, if you are uh, in need of something today and you aren't going to get buyer's remorse just because you didn't wait a few months, then I would just upgrade. Um, but if you don't need it, uh, or if you're going to feel upset when something launches and it's better, which shouldn't be a surprise, but some people, um, I think, get get a lot of buyer's remorse, then then obviously wait. But you just if you wait, know that the price will be at MSRP or higher when it launches, 
and uh, it may be difficult to get, but we'll see how things sort out. I would assume so, though. Do you get a? Um, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll answer this too on this personal opinion. I would keep the 2080 Ti because it's like it's very good. <laughs> so um, you're, you're fine for quite a while. Uh, okay. What are you thinking for the swap? What you done? Uh, I pulled the Be Quiet supply we used last time just because oh, okay. I know that one works. Um, it's oh. a little bigger, which we don't have a lot of room to work with there, but that's why I'm popping these drive sleds out because then we can stick some spare cables in there. Thousand watt power supply. Yeah, I think it's I think it's old, but it, it works. So. You can tell from the box. <laughs> There's a print defect. It means it's worth more, just like Pokemon cards. <laughs> That's why they got rid of it by sending it to us. You can tell our, our inventory number is under 1,000, so it's, oh, uh, yeah, it's <laughs> very old. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess that's true. Uh, that's fun. fun fact for people watching, I guess. How many pieces of hardware do we have here? I don't Do you remember the most recent inventory number? Uh, no, but it's gotta it's be, over a thousand. It's got to be like fourteen hundred now or something. I know what it is. Oh, Andrew's got a yeah. What is it? Fourteen fifty-eight. Almost fifteen hundred pieces of hardware here and studio equipment, things like that. Okay, uh, let's see. So let's talk about the case for a minute before I do. Well, actually, how far am I back? I'm not too far back on super chats. Um, I'm going to read a couple more super chats here, and then we're going to talk about thoughts on the case. And I'll, I'll, I'm going to look at it a little bit too more directly. So first of all, Brian Jones sent ten dollars and said, "Could you install a large subwoofer in that enclosure and use the air movement caused by the speaker to cool the PC?" I think that all makes physical sense. I'm not sure how much air uh, subwoofers move. I'd assume a lot if it's a high-end one, but just move it back and forth, though, right? Like, I don't. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I'm not, I'm you not need a lot of one-way valve on there, so it all it pumps the air one direction. Like blow out the subwoofer or something? I don't know how they work. Don't listen to me. Uh, Emerald the Celestial sent ten dollars and said, "I have a 3090 and a 10 850K. That's actually pretty good CPU. Please tell me my CPU is great and stuff. I need the oh, please tell me my CPU is great and stuff. I need the affirmation. Either that or be brutal. I can take it." Well, we're, we're ahead here because I said that's a good CPU before I got to the part asking for affirmation. So now you know it's genuine. Um, that is, I mean, it's a 3090. Like, you're fine. It's you're trash. You're way ahead of everyone. Where's the TI? Yeah, where's the TI? Ugh. Um, no, 3090 at 1050K is great. Uh, you're not really going to be CPU bound if you're playing, if you're actually using that GPU. Well, I mean, you'll be CPU bound sometimes, but. 4K, you're going to be more on the GPU side, so you're you're in a good spot. Uh, let's see. I like the I like the um, forwardness of the comment, though. Uh, let's see. Bazinga X. <laughs> We've seen Bazinga X quite a few times in the streams. It says, how about mouse pads with snowflakes at paw print? Higher value. You're probably right on the higher value. Um, also. Much harder to get cooperation. Uh, I'm not sure that we'd have to set up a trap of like. Just make it seem like she's not supposed to step on it. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. And then she'll walk all over them. Kaluk <laughs> uh, uh, says, Do you eat the crust of the pizza, of your pizza? Uh, that is not a security question, unlike last time from the same super chatter. That one we can answer. Will people be offended if we answer incorrectly? I mean, I think, well, there's a correct answer. You're, you're supposed to eat the crust. It's there. It's part of the food. <laughs> I'm not sure it's there is a good argument, but I do think you're supposed to eat it. <laughs> Andrew had they, a, give you, they give you dipping sauce for it. That's true. Uh, the cardboard box is also there. <laughs> Although some of the pizzas I've had probably tasted worse than the box. 
Uh, yes. Next question. Uh oh, the table is rising. Nope. It's connected to a cable. Uh, next question. <laughs> Twisted Autosports, ten dollars. I, I shattered the side panel on my five thousand D Airflow. Ouch. Any harm in running the PC without a panel? No. Um, the air pressure will change, but probably only for the better. And dust, I guess. If you have kids or pets, then I, maybe they, they could mess up the computer or uh, put a hand into a fan or something. But if not, then you're fine. Uh, does Corsair sell individual case parts? Probably, but I have a feeling they would just give you one. I don't know. What? People are getting really mad about the cross. Oh, are they? <laughs> Good. Yes. Boost the. Bo boost the. Um, boost the algorithm. Fight about pizza crust in the chat. Perfect. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's read some of the chats. Big crust consumer. Crusters versus no crusters. Uh, don't waste food. Yes, eat the crust. Who cares? Offend them. Mm. <laughs> I feel like that comment related to do you eat pizza crust is like, that's like a, a microcosm for society. Mm. Uh, you will burn at the stake if you answer wrong. Mm. Oh, I read that one a little too late. Hopefully uh, we answered right. I had a friend that used to uh, eat Uncrustables in elementary school. Oh, was that a, th I guess, I mean, the name is self-evident, so I uh, think I well, know they're, they're peanut, butter, peanut butter and jelly uh, sandwiches, but they're just, like, little circles of white bread. Okay. And he would, they, they come with, like, a little pressed rim. I hope, I hope he's watching and he's, like, I feel personally attacked. Well, he, uh, he would take them and he would peel the edges off of the Uncrustables every day. So there's already no crust? But there's already no crust, yeah. So he would peel the... The little, the little pinched edge of, uh, of bread that sealed in the peanut butter and jelly. I see. It's Moving on! <laughs> 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 next one. Uh, let's see, the next one is from... I oh this is the chat now. <laughs> uh, there's like a civil war in chat over pizza crust. <laughs> um, don't get them started on the whole biscuits versus cookies versus cakes debate. Someone says, Blendinator, $20. Blendinator uh, has the Blender logo for the avatar, nice. which makes, Andrew said, nice. Andrew likes Blender. Out of curiosity, what formal education, if any, do you have, Steve? Uh, any good luck with, oh, anyway, good luck with your barbecue. Uh, it could be referring to July 4th coming up or this computer. <laughs> Either one is a valid option. Um, Formal education, I guess it depends on how you define formal. So I, uh, most of the stuff we do here, we figured out along the way. Um, I dropped out of a community college once it became clear that GN was all I wanted to do. And I had this realization one day where I was like, I, oh, I went to PAX. I went to PAX Prime. And I got back from it. And I remember talking to people in the class I was in in the college and I was like I think I only want to go to those all the time and then maybe within a week I was like why am I here still I'll just like I can do that if that's what I want to do um, so anyway that was my realization formal education um, probably the most formal I've had has been training from uh, when so, spoiler this is public knowledge but spoiler alert, alert I worked for Dell for about a year I actually really liked working there um, despite the products they make today, it was a, a fun work environment for me. Uh, so I had some training there. I would say that the test engineering knowledge I gained there carried over to this, but I built a lot on it myself, so not much. Um, Patrick is, uh, by the more standard definition, formally trained or formally educated. I, I have a BS in computer science, but it's also worth noting that I was working for GN in some capacity before I went to college and while I was going to college. And then after I had graduated from college, I came and worked for GN. So yeah. it, it was useful, and I do use that knowledge. But Andrew dropped out of the same school I did, I guess, right, Andrew? Andrew's behind the camera. He does um, 
So not just like some of the, the editing camera work stuff, but also um, all the animations that you've seen. So if you saw our transient video and you saw the, the um, uh, current clamp animation, Andrew did that. And that's all self-taught, I guess, uh, at least to the extent it is these days where, I don't know, I know you watch a lot of like tutorials on YouTube and stuff. So uh, two, two out of three Gamers Nexus employees in this room are dropouts of the same school. Uh, I think I, I, have, I had probably like 20 credits. I, it wasn't much. It was all in English, like all of it. So I dropped the math classes and uh, everything else I, I kind of did on my own in between with, uh, I guess it's like the thing I liked about learning it on my own was we, we did not have that like explosive YouTube sub growth that some channels get. And Patrick and I have talked about this before, which allowed both of us to make a lot of mistakes early on in a vacuum where no one cared. And you'd get one or two commenters who were kind of dedicated early and would help us out. So that was a great way to learn. Um, it would be much harder if you blew up and got a lot of attention faster, I think. So I prefer that. And then I've had a lot of training with um, engineers in the industry where we visit them. We'll do like two full days of just training. How to use this equipment, how do you guys test it? And we take that all back here, or our other offices, the house, whatever, in the past, and, and sort of reinvent what they do into what we do. So a lot of training, but no education for me. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Josh posted a comment and said, Steve, thanks for keeping Dell together while you did. I don't know that I would take, there were 100,000 employees and contractors there when I was there. I don't think I did that much <laughs> to keep them together. Like, it was a lot. I did really enjoy it, though. It was a good work environment. Like, uh, at least for my team, they treated us well. Manager was great. Director was great. The SVP was great. Um, the cafeteria was really cool and had excellent food. So I liked working there. I just don't like these days what they make. And I don't think I can really talk about what I think of what they made when I was there. So that's irrelevant. <laughs> All right. I'm, cu I'm curious to see what people think of that. But there was a comment that says programming is fun. Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> it can be. Let's see. There are some comments. Um, let's see. Steve worked for the enemy. What a plot twist, someone <laughs> says. <laughs> uh, all right. I always like seeing how people react to that just because of our recent Dell reviews. And yet they they haven't invited you back for uh, like a tour or anything like that? You I don't think the people <laughs> we talked to there know. I didn't, I didn't ever say like, hey, I mm. used to work there, by the way. Um, they, I mean, they could certainly find out very easily, but I don't think they're aware, the, the Dell PR people. Mm -hmm. I had asked, I had asked them, hey, can we come check out the, um, the uh, Alienware team, like interview the Alienware team, check out the lab and talk about the products they're making and try and like help you guys and, and then they can help us understand why they suck. <laughs> um, and uh, they didn't like that, that uh, offer and so they said, no, you don't need to come out here to talk about it. I was like, okay, well, um, I, my key fob no longer works, so I guess I won't be able to let myself in. Uh, Benjamin Frone, thank you for years of great content. Greetings from the Netherlands. Greetings. Kevin Tremor, Temer says, what is your least favorite pizza topping? Uh, all hail back to you, Steve. All hail tech, tech Jesus. Uh, Kevin said it, not me. And then, I mean, I said it when but he said it first. Uh, <laughs> so, I don't know, a least favorite pizza top in this case would be pretty bad. I see a lot of, uh, of uh, non-American takes on pizza. That have, like, any, any, seafood doesn't belong on pizza. <laughs> Maybe it tastes fine, but it's, it's conceptually just wrong. Well, now you all know Patrick's opinion, <laughs> and you can decide his fate in the comments. I don't. I don't think there's going to be a lot of seafood pizza. To I mean, anchovies, I guess, count. I like anchovies. It's just salt. I thought anchovies uh, were a plant for a long time. <laughs> it's 
Did it change your opinion when you found out? No, I realized that was artichoke. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is great. This is, this is a while ago, <laughs> to be clear. Uh, okay, so let's, I guess before you throw that on, let's do a walkthrough sure. of the case. We haven't talked about the computer in a little while. Yeah. So let me get some, first of all, um, it As technically fits. Everything technically fits. Right. It will close and seal. Just it's not. I actually I kind of like how this cooler looks. I don't know how good it is. We haven't tested it, but it's very like dense. You know, it's compact. Mm -hmm. um, let's show a shot of this from the side. I should not pick that up from there. That's very weak. Pretty densely packed. Uh, be quiet cooler here. I really wish the hard drive cage was removable. Oh, is it not at all? It's not. And if you're building small form factor, I think there's a decent chance that you might just put an M.2 drive in there and not bother with other drives. Yeah. It's riveted in, though. So. Yeah, and you can see the cable packing limitations here <laughs> are, are severe. Um, yeah, I like how this went in. The... How's the RAM clearance? Oh, actually really good. Yeah, RAM clearance is good. I don't know that we would clear the first slot, though. Yeah, can you, you can tell I was like trying to theme the parts, and then I got to the GPU, and I just got excited about picking the biggest one that would fit in the case. <laughs> so. Yeah, let's look at that. We like that GPU, though, right? Yeah, so, that did well. Yeah. Sapphire, Sapphire is um, not always, but generally is, is a pretty safe bet for good engineering on their higher end stuff. Uh, I don't think I've looked at one I have disliked in a long time, so credit to them. Uh, so you can see the GPU does fit, but it's in a bit of a fish tank. And how are the fins oriented? Top down. All right. So the fins are oriented this way. This is like a bit of an educational moment for you all. You maybe I'm sure a lot of people know this, but in case you don't, you can apply this to any build. The GPU fins obviously direct the airflow. And um, the only reason I point that out is because even though it is self-evident when you look at it, I think a lot of people don't consider it because why would you? And the air is going to come out the top and the bottom, so it's ejecting into the motherboard, which is fine. I mean, it's, it doesn't have a path to escape, but that just means you're relying on the top. And there's less direction out the sides. Now, these fins are, are punctured uh, this direction, so there's some air movement between and out the back of the case. In this instance, though, most of the air is going to come out here and hit that acrylic, and it's just going to bake. I mean, like, if you run this thing under full load and you touch the acrylic, it'll be warm. Mm. And the GPU is going to be very hot. So normally you want at least an inch of clearance between the GPU fans and whatever it's up against. Uh, ideally, you have more than that, like two to three. And um, we're not really getting that here, so that's, that's a big limitation. But, I mean, as far as, like... A, I think in a different case, I would like this build a lot. The yeah. The motherboard could be better, but it's not bad. Yeah, in a different small form factor case, even one where the downdraft makes more direct sense right. with the way it's set up. This, I don't... There's a lot of dead space in the front of this enclosure. Yeah, not a lot you could do with it either. I don't know, like up in here, so... It, it's kind of surprising, but the tank case was really easy to build in in comparison to this. Yeah. We, we were aware of some of the limitations before we started today, but the tank case, it's really just you take the top off and it all just Fits. dumps in there. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, I think um, their hard drive cage issue could have been solved by maybe making them optional up here. Mm -hmm. if you're not doing anything with that space. I think it might be kind of a structural hard drive cage, though. On That's the, true. In retrospect. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, the common structural hard drive cage because your case is too flimsy otherwise. Interesting. Um, I don't know. Like, as a build, I like the build. I don't like the case. Uh, I think it's an interesting idea. I think if they actually wind tunneled it out, you could have something that would be much more interesting. Like, if they made this mesh, if they meshed it up, and, uh, and uh, mesh meshing, meshing up a common vernacular choice when referring to computer cases. The Leon Lee's going to start using that. Oh, yeah. Not careful. Yeah, the Leon Lee Lanquil 2 mesh up. The, the <laughs> sunny side up meshlicious. Oh, no. <laughs> um, ooh, there's a lot of... Can you get, like, a kind of top-down shot on this without me tilting it uh, too much? Let's see. Maybe you can see it this way. There's a lot of structural give there. I mean, the GPU's moving with it, but 
this whole thing. So it's not particularly anchored, but I guess the, the solution is don't pick up the computer. Yeah, it's <laughs> one of the cases that really needs to be fully assembled before it oh, yeah, has true. stability. <laughs> um, yeah, very inefficient use of space. Could have been cool, but I think they would need like a 120 mil in the back, which they have a spot for, mm -hmm. and then um, and the holes are not bad there, and then an open 200 in the front to really make it work. Any thoughts on it now that you've like additional? It's like a trash can. <laughs> Somebody said they took apart R2-D2. Oh, and this, this, this is it, yeah. yeah. You could probably, you know, slap some paint on there and make some legs for this side of it. And yeah. It's not like it's going to get worse. No, it will <laughs> not get <laughs> worse. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not getting much worse. Uh, oh, Brian posted. Uh, Who told him? I will have to get to the, uh, to the other Super Chats in between in a moment, but Brian is the VIP here today. He's the one who sent this case. So BPS Customs, who has a channel we've linked below, sent in $4.99 and, uh, and said, I never lost faith that I'd see this beauty again. <laughs> Brian, I don't know how long you were here during this stream, but we, we slowly uncovered more and more of your descent into madness as we found more and more BPS Customs stickers all over it. And I might have suggested to the chat that you've probably sticker bombed like traffic lights and light poles and uh, ski lifts with your stickers because it seems that they are everywhere. <laughs> also, many signatures, some that resemble a signature and some that say beeps costumes. <laughs> Where's the panel? <laughs> Where's the beeps costumes panel? It's, uh, it's on the case now. Oh, is it? It's, okay, there you go. Still. Good to see Brian in here. That paint pen's pretty good, though. Let's see where he got that. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the BPS comment. I also referred someone to uh, Brian, if you're still watching, referred someone to your channel earlier today, actually, uh, because he mentioned he's interested in RC cars. And I was like, oh, I know a guy. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Brian on his channel has posted a few videos of RC cars that I think do like 80 to 100 miles an hour. It's insane. They're cool. So anyway, that's that's linked below. Okay, let's do some chats here. A uh, quick reminder, if you buy a mouse mat or mouse pad during the stream today, like these red and black HUD themed mouse mats, or we've got the wireframe ones I'll pick up in a second, then Patrick and I will be signing all of them bought during the stream. We don't do this very often, so it's a special promotion. It's also helping us fund uh, our new piece of test equipment we bought that I'm not going to reveal any information on yet. But that is that's that order has started, and so this will help us out. And then you get a cool, rare piece of signed stuff from us. Uh, we do mouse pads as well on the store on store.cameraxis.net, and this is a wireframe one. These are our best-selling. Uh, products in terms of just quantity of all time. I think the mod mats are pretty pretty fierce competition though. Uh, and these have wireframe PC components on them, so like coolers, radiators, motherboards, RAM, stuff like that, that Andrew built in Blender. I like the tower CPU cooler. Okay, so some super chats. Uh, let's see. Trenton says, Steve went to community college with my brother. Uh, he has the name here as well. Does he remember? Yes, I know who that is. Uh, and I have, I have known him for since before college also. Uh, Jeremy Adienza, $25. I have all your guys' SKUs since the beginning. Great merch. Keep your tweezers taut for this build, and thanks for the content. This build needs more than tweezers. <laughs> this build needs a hammer. Uh, and as far as the, the collecting the GN merch, thank you. That helps us significantly. It's the most direct way to support us in what we're doing. And you get something in return. So big, big thank you for that, Jeremy. Um, <laughs> I like this name. Phyrexian Metal, $5. Any reasonable micro ATX cases you all like? First of all, Phyrexian, uh, do you? 
you recall the or the Magic the Gathering? I that's a little well. I I'm a casual. No, oh. but I, I was about to say that might be a little after my time because I was playing I in the. They still they probably still have fire axing maybe. Well, oh, yeah, after a, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I remember this from like seventh or onslaught block. Uh, okay, maybe maybe that was, I, I was I was playing Magic in like I don't know like 2006 ish 2007 you so anything quit. that wasn't anything that very wasn't very specifically I, I, well, you I always go everyone goes back though, at some point they're, they're, they're like five think, dollars it's like <laughs> yeah. it's, what people am I gonna think not they buy? quit <laughs> and then they walk by one on Target and they're like oh for old time's sake and then next week they're at Friday Night Magic I didn't go to Target this morning what are you, what are you talking about <laughs> um, Phyrexian Hulk I think is the only flavor text I've memorized on any card uh, the it doesn't think it doesn't feel one. I don't know if that was Mirrodin, but there's your MTG knowledge for today. Um, <laughs> so Firex in metal, any any MT ATX cases you actually like? Uh, MATX? Uh, there there almost definitely are. The torrent uh, oh, mini yeah. looks pretty good. Yeah, we the have torrent. A, oh, nano, sorry, not mini. Does the nano support micro ATX or that mini only? I'm it should support micro ATX if it doesn't. It's a, not an incredibly small case. I might be wrong. Let's see. You're that right is, that it's not that small. Um, specs. We, we haven't tested that one, but it yeah, looks good. But they're all the same, really. They're just scaled. Um, where's the motherboard form factor? Why is that not listed here? I. I have an excuse because I haven't tested it, so I don't. I don't actually know what it fits. Um, I don't know if the, the Pop Mini, I guess, is named Mini. So mini that would ITX. Kind of imply mini ITX. Man, that's and and Mini DTX, which is a really interesting but very rare form factor. Um, there's definitely, yes, there's definitely one we like. I just can't think of it off the top of my head. Uh, the NZXT and. Um, uh, NZXT, Fantax, and Fractal actually all have like normally have a middle step. That's micro ATX. Very uncommon these days. The NZXT Vulcan I liked a lot. Definitely not made anymore, but I thought uh, well for the time. Oh, yeah, the, some of the Leon Lee, um, the new Mini, the new Mini Air. Air uh, Mini. Yeah, the Leon Lee O11 Mini Air Mini. That yeah, one. that might be another one that only does ATX, but that that's uh, one of them that was the scalable uh, one. I think that's the yeah one of them was scalable. But that's big. I mean, like, but I guess for micro ATX, it makes more sense than many. We don't do small form factor testing, so I don't memorize whether the cases support certain motherboard sizes. Yeah. Um, I, I like, I mean, it's kind of a stupid one, but I like the, uh, the cute pet case um, that all aluminum uh, Yeston case we reviewed. That's micro ATX, I think. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. That's one of the better quality ones we've looked at, but it's a bit silly. Uh, okay, next one. Uh, Ma Ka, I guess, says, I confess I have, can I have ad block absolution, please? I mean, yeah, I'm fine with it. Um, I think it's kind of like, I, I, I get it if people use ad blockers. Uh, and also, I don't personally use them, but I don't really have a problem with it because especially like if you're doing any kind of IT work for someone, I don't know, I guess they think of like moms or dads or grandparents where you're like, let me just keep this person away from ad networks that might be like infected with malware at some point so I don't have to come back and fix it. That's a great reason for them and they've earned that, but um, I don't personally use them because it is how people get paid, so it's, you know, I understand that part of it too. You have to use them if you want to look up anything on a wiki at any point. Because otherwise, it's impossible to read anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Adblock Absolution, yes, sure. I mean, that's the thing is, it's like, if you actually feel bad about using it, I appreciate that. It is how we make money. But, I, like, when someone gives even a, a dollar, it's, I'm just going to sound like Jimmy Wales now. <laughs> it does kind of eliminate any um, not watching ads you've done because the, the cost per thousand views, you'd have to watch like a thousand videos 
to uh, equal a couple dollar donation, basically. So um, as far as we're concerned, that's just fine. Uh, what are the, oh, Case Labs. This is a good comment. Carlos in chat says Case Labs had some good MATX cases. Unfortunately, they're out of business, but they were bought recently by a guy who's bringing them back, so. <clears throat> I do, oh, someone says, oh, Steve forgot about AMD's bike for the worst product. That's true, too. Uh, Zygma Tech Aquila as apparently was a, according to Grievous here, was a pretty sick micro ATX case, so that might be worth at least looking up. Uh, Andrew's handing me glass cleaner. Andrew's the glass cleaning expert here. <laughs> he does, yeah. Andrew, <laughs> Andrew has the job of making sure there's not too many fingerprints in the B-roll shots. Otherwise, people comment, although it's a realistic representation of the product. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, YouTube Premium, someone's pointed out, is also a great sort of thing. And also, someone's agreeing with you on truth about wiki ad blocking. Yeah, that's. <sighs> Pretty, a pet peeve. The Steam overlay is useless and it crashes with too many ads. And if you look up the wiki on your phone, <laughs> then every your, your whole screen is covered with ads. And the actual area that you can read is like a postage stamp. And if you try to click out of any of the ads, you accidentally click on them. So You're not even going to thank them for the postage stamp size they've given you? No, oh. I'm not. Wow. That's, could, they that's could give you nothing. problem. <laughs> Someone's not going to understand that I was being sarcastic. <laughs> yes, that's terrible. <laughs> The, uh, at least the days of pop-ups are mostly over. Those have yeah. been pretty successfully killed by, at the browser level. <laughs> Those were just like malicious. Um, Camaro 85, sorry, I meant testing the 4090 and 4K with some 9th gen or 10th gen or Ryzen PCIe Gen 3. We will be doing that for sure. I don't know what platform it will be, but guaranteed we're going to be testing PCIe generation with the 4090s. We, we do that every time, so for sure you'll see that. Uh, I'm going to read a bunch of Super Chats to catch up really quick, and we're going to do a cutoff here. Um, so as far as Super Chats go, I will read all of the ones that are currently in. Uh, I am going to stop reading them at this point for the cutoff time so that we can just get through the ones we have and then close out the stream. We'll talk more about the case, what we think of the build, too, as we uh, get through those. But I do need to catch up on some of those because I like, to, I like to acknowledge our one. That's much more, that's much sturdier. Um, Su let's see, no more Super Chats after 6.58 p.m. EST. You can take the uh, legs off of this, so if you just wanted it to like roll around on the floor, you can make it perfectly round. <laughs> Good. Like the, like the wheel PC. Yeah. OK, let's read a bunch of these, then we're going to talk about this case a little more. Um, Kev Party says, another vote for a blackout desk pad, et cetera. Keep up the good work. Thank you. We'll make a note of that. GK2011, I use Adblock. Here's $20. Wow. I mean, yes, that's far better than even with the percent YouTube takes, like on Super Chat. That's, that's far better. Uh, and YouTube's happier that way, too, because they take some of that. So You paid for everyone else. Yeah, you basically same. paid for everyone else in the chat for Adblock. And, uh, monochromatic, 150 no message, thank you. Uh, Jaden Butters, $2. Signing front or back of the mouse pads? I got one. We will be signing the front. We normally do the top, one of the top corners. Typically do top right, so it's away from the mousing area. Use that one as an example. Oh, yeah, right. This one we top left. Uh, but we normally do top right. Also, this one was pulled aside, I think, because uh, we were using, like, a experimenting with markers. We do benchmarking of like markers on mouse pads. That's what I was, that's what I was complimenting Brian's uh, paint pen, because yeah. we go through we go through a, metallic sharpies oh, every time. We go through a lot. And and uh, we normally do testing on like the surfaces with different ones to see which shows up the best and which one is the most resilient. So let's see. Wesley says, picked up another mouse mat. Thank you. And says, uh, will a Thermaltake Tower 500 review be coming in the future? Really excited to see your take on it. Tanks. It's not, that's, that's, that's not, that stream's over. <laughs> uh, I don't know the Tower 500, do I? Oh, it's a, um, 
has this one not been out for a while? I thought it had. Oh no, it's new. Okay. I guess it's just the Tower 900 but smaller, or the Tower 100 but bigger. Couldn't you tell by the name? Tower 500 is so descriptive. At um, least I didn't put an H in front of the 5. I don't remember if we covered that. Like, we, during one of the shows when you had me writing up new stories about various cases, I don't know if that came up. Um, did I? When did it come up? Maybe I misread the date. They didn't mail us one yet, so. Yeah, no, that looks new. June 8th. Yeah, June 8th. I don't know. Maybe. How's the airflow look on it? We're looking at the Tower 500 if you want to Google a lawn. Just on Google Images. I'm not going to share the screen. It's not worth the effort. Uh, it has more holes than I would expect for a thermal take aquarium. And it's yeah. still got the showroom kind of look to it. So... We kind of liked the smaller version. The 100? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll look at it. Uh, next one, Phoenix from the Netherlands. Says, thanks for the nice reviews. Keep it up, guys. Thank you. Uh, Matt says, turn on the AC, Patrick. Almost everyone watching is sitting in their air-conditioned room complaining about noise. <laughs> no, it's all right. We're, we're these almost these there. shirts are so breathable and comfortable. Who needs air conditioning? Oh, you're getting good at that. <laughs> Patrick's, Patrick's starting to pick up mm -hmm. the natural segues. Uh, Alex has just picked up a mouse map and waiting for the ability to catch a stream and get a signed one. Still working with Buildzoid, or have you all parted ways? We haven't had anything to really work on lately. Um, we worked on some motherboards a while back, but uh, he started his stream, or not just streaming, but uploading schedule as well, and got very consistent with it. Seemed to be doing pretty well with it. So um, we've sort of uh, just not really had a great content opportunity in terms of VRM analysis lately. Maybe once stuff picks up again with GPUs in the 40 series or something. Bruce Lucas says, enjoy a red box rental. Uh, oh, because it was $2. <laughs> OK, I was like, wait, what? Mini mod mat as a, as a mouse mat, question mark. You can use a mouse on the mod mats, of course, but they are a rough surface that's designed for working on. So there's a lot of roll-in friction, which is because it's not meant to be a mouse mat. So you can do it, but we don't really recommend it. If you, you're okay with the friction, then that's fine. Uh, Scott Johnson. This is a good question, and I can answer most of it. Uh, $10. What advice would you give to an aspiring tech journalist or reviewer on YouTube or TikTok? Uh, I don't think there's any way around this, but if you want to be a tech journalist or reviewer in the proper sense, then TikTok is not the platform for that. Um, you could maybe do small stuff to try and drive interest, but to really do it justice, I think you need at least like mid-length pieces. A minute isn't... You can't review a product adequately in a minute. And it's, in my opinion, this is like... This isn't even like a hot take, because I'll stand behind this one. But in my opinion, anyone representing a one-minute video as anything more than a flyover is, is really misrepresenting the, what, that thing, what that video is. Because it's just not possible to, mm -hmm. we're long-winded, but you could go to people in this, this space who do six-minute videos or 10-minute videos, and they're still packed with information compared to like a one-minute like, like, look at this motherboard. It has this weird thing on the MOSFETs. Look, the socket has a latch. Look, the PCIe has a reinforced plate. All you're doing is advertising their product. Like, maybe you can criticize it, but um, my advice would be if you are really interested in, in doing it justice and doing it well for real, and you don't have to be, would be to go a little longer form. You don't have to go like 30 minutes, but um, six minute videos to have a lot of info too. Tom Scott comes to mind. Like yeah. it can be done. Um, so yeah, my advice is either uh, either either kind of work to work a job and then um, do it on the side in low hours and just sort of build. Actually, I think that's what I would do because that's that's what I did. You do low hours. Um, working on it, on reviewing things and learning, 
And then once you feel like you've gotten pretty good, you make the decision, okay, do I commit to this? Uh, can I make this work? Have I saved up enough money? And then you, you kind of go for it at that point. But otherwise, the biggest piece of advice I have for anyone who's like, I want to do YouTube or whatever, is um, don't get too caught up in quality. A lot of people really, really worry about like, they, they want to make their first couple videos. And I've had this encounter where people come up to me, they're like, my son wants to do YouTube, what should I tell him? And the, the answer is don't worry about what camera should I get, what light should I get, where should the lights go, what should the background be, what intro should I make. All of that's wrong. You just need to make videos or write reviews and, uh, and just start doing it and, and then worry about the quality later. Focus on the content first. Um, I don't know. Any thoughts from you? Yeah, I guess uh, don't let manufacturers step on you either. Oh, yeah. uh, you don't owe them anything if you're getting a product for free. You know, you just yeah. make a review honestly, and yeah. if you have to buy the product yourself, then you know that doesn't feel great to say you have to buy it. But yeah, um, I mean it depends, right? If you want to really make it a business, then sometimes you'll have expenses, and um, when it's early, you won't be able to afford the more expensive things. So you're going to rely more on a manufacturer helping you out if you get to that stage, which is fine. But like Patrick's saying. You, you can't, let, as soon as you let them push you around once, then that becomes status quo and you lose. There's no real coming back from that. Because if you respond next time and you're like, I'm not letting you push me around, they're gonna be like, where did this come from? Like, what happened? I thought we were cool, bro. And you're like, we're not bros. I'm a reviewer. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm representing consumers. So also if, for the people who do, get swayed more easily by the manufacturer, by money or by just pressure of maybe they feel like they might be wrong or whatever. It hurts the whole industry because it hurts the credibility of everyone. And if, if the person doing it has a large enough following, it puts us in a position where now we have to look at it and go like, okay, do we, do we sort of take a shot at that reviewer because they're making everyone look bad and just sort of get everyone back in check or do we let it go? Um, so. Yeah, I guess those are the thoughts on it. Um, in terms of review, in terms of manufacturer relations, uh, I guess the, the biggest thing to remember is that you don't have to start by reviewing expensive GPUs. You can start with things that either are more affordable or you do your own, you're doing a PC build. This is how I did it. You buy parts because you want to build a computer for yourself, and then you review those parts. It's like you're buying it anyway. Uh, it's also a great test of if you can break the um, the uh, confirmation bias, right? Like, I invested in the thing. Oh yeah, yeah. So the the I bought this and you, you criticized it, so I'm going to go on the internet and tell you that you're wrong because right. I own it, and therefore it must be good. Yeah, and as a reviewer, if you're like, I bought this. Of course, you still want it to be good, but if it's not, you need to be okay coming to terms with that. Um, so anyway, that's that's my. I have a lot of thoughts on that, but anyway, hopefully that. Uh, yeah, I think I think the point you made is one of the best ones, which is just like, don't get pushed around. At the same time, if the manufacturer says, "Hey, we disagree with your result or your conclusion," be open to it and listen. But if they're being aggressive and doing it in a in a intimidating way, then that's it's okay to shut the door. But be open to it if they're like, our engineer would really like to talk to you. Sometimes the engineers are on, but not always. All right, good question. Uh, Gabriel says, recently found you guys and absolutely have been loving your content. I recently got into PC gaming, but made the poor decision of buying the HP Pavilion gaming PC. Uh, it's the one, actually, it's the one we reviewed previously. Should I get rid of it? So we weren't big fans of that, which I'm guessing is why you said it was a poor decision. But um, I think the question is the same as the others, which is, are you happy with it overall? So even though we didn't particularly like it, if you're like, I think this is fine and it's serving my needs, then just stick with it. Yeah, you already own it. You know, if you buy a different PC, then you're just buying a PC twice. Yeah, so you might be able to kind of make it work. You know, if you do a clean Windows install, you've blown away half the issues we had with it. Mm -hmm. And that is free. So you might want to do that. And you could, you could uh, change the fans or something for 20 bucks and you'd be pretty good. Arisman says, is ECC memory necessary for home or small business servers? Necessary? No. Um, necessary depending on certain boards, as we found yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. If you have enterprise, you know, Xeon 
chipset stuff, then sometimes they require ECC. Right. Um, I'm going to read ahead a couple of these. And in the meantime, if you want to answer a question I just saw in chat that is asking, what is that case? And maybe you can catch everyone up briefly on what we did. Yeah. So this is a case sometimes known as the Vetru K2, I think. Uh, ours is not that. Ours is the Game KM. Uh, I don't. Know. I don't think it has a product name. No, uh, I mean maybe it did. Um, this was sent to us by Brian from uh, Beeps Costumes or BPS <laughs> Customs, if you actually want to look up the channel on YouTube. All right. Um, with a baggie full of screws and no instructions. So maybe there were instructions. Maybe there was a product name. If there was, it was probably entirely in Chinese because that's the labels are mostly in Chinese. On yeah, here. it just says, uh, at least on the logo on the front, all it says in, in Chinese is just um, like play it good or play excellent. Uh, so we don't have much to go off of other than that. So despite the size, this is only micro ATX compatible or mini ATX. And not a ton of space below here. We've got a 200 millimeter fan in the front with glass in front of the important part and mesh in front of the part that doesn't matter. Uh, we've got a vent up here that you could theoretically put a 240 radiator on, but there are other problems to be addressed. Uh, we put the maximum size of hardware that would possibly fit in this case, so even though I just spent a bunch of effort in getting this on, it is more fun to look at if I take it back off. Um, Let's see. Uh, big GPU, big CPU cooler. Let me jump on the next one. Next one says, uh, Mix CT says, I have an RX 6600 XT and a 5600G, the APU. Is it worth upgrading to a 5900X or 5800X 3D? Again, it's sort of in that it depends on um, what you're doing and how, you, how happy you are with it and how much money you have to spend on this stuff. but. A 5900X or a 5800X 3D, you will far outclass your GPU if you're okay with that. <laughs> then, um, then either good. Is it worth upgrading? Uh, you'll notice a difference in production applications, very large difference. So if you do any kind of Adobe Premiere, Photoshop, Blender, um, Unreal Engine, all those types of applications, you will notice a difference. And it'll probably feel pretty worth it if you work with them regularly. In gaming, uh, I mean, you'd get a you'd get a similarly good uplift by going to like a, a an R7 non APU or something. So I think I would wait a little bit. Zen Four is right around the corner, so I'd maybe wait a little longer. Four by four blazer, ten dollars, and sent in a sticker of what appears to be a pear with a cape flying. Thank you. Uh, now I know. I know. We should look at the stickers sometimes because it seems like <laughs> I like the surprise. <laughs> I like when when people in chats on ones I've never seen before. <laughs> Half that seventy seven show. Can you set up a chain of gigabyte power supplies for a fireworks show for us? I mean, July fourth is around the corner. Uh, Golden Sun three DS. Would you consider covering a program called Primo Cache? It allows you to have SSD and RAM to speed up SSD and hard drives by caching the most used data. Great uh, compromise, they say, between fast and slow drives. Uh, I probably would not, just because we don't work with storage and we don't work with software too much. Um, let's burn through as fast as we can, focus on the Super Chats for a bit here. Sounds like Optane. Kind of. Yeah, so that does sound kind of like Optane. Jeremy says, there are small form factor PSUs coming out with 1300 watt ratings. With these downsizing and compression, uh, is there a concern for safety and long-term viability? I don't know. Um, I guess, it, like any other power supply, it depends on how good its protections are. So if, if it has good over power protection, it's not going too crazy. Like if you're at 130% OPP, safety-wise, assuming everything else is competently built, then you're fine, probably. It just depends. It's so hard to answer that in a blanket statement because you know we've seen 850 watt power supplies that catch on fire, and we've seen a lot of them that don't. So it just depends on the corners they cut. 
I think to, to give a little more of a concrete answer, I think downsize and compression in SFX at higher wattage, you are going to see issues with transient spikes. So 100% that is going to be a problem. Um, some of them will do better with handling it if they have programmable MCUs. Not the superhero thing, but the microcontrollers, um, then they'll handle it better. But uh, And they probably all have them at, the, at this stage anyway. One true Ricky sent $2 and said, hey, hello. Uh, Hi, Ricky. Moose sent in $20 and said, I'm looking to replace my half X 942. I have a side intake, both top fans and the front fan all knocked to a would any modern case use these fans? What would you recommend with the same air cooling performance? Are uh, those the 200 mils? Modern cases will use them. The problem is, especially cases from that era, the holes are not standardized. So you may have to get creative with mounting it, but there are cases that fit the fans. It's just if the hole lines up or not, you can get at least one of them threaded. And then for the other, I don't know, you run a zip tie or something if you have to. Um, off the top of my head, I, I wouldn't be able to name one, though. Uh, Cooler Master made some that we didn't hate eventually. The yeah. H500P we didn't like, but... Well, yeah, cases, there's plenty of 200s, I guess. Lee and Lee's 215, mm -hmm. right? Um, I don't know if they fit the fans or not. Actually, you may have tested that, I don't know. The Noctua 200s. Oh, um, the Noctua 200s have more mounting holes than any other fans on them. Yeah. So they, they probably have the widest compatibility. They did not fit on the Cooler Master, one of the H500s I looked at mm -hmm. a long time ago. Uh, Accelerant, $20. Wow, thank you. It says, just got two mouse pads. That's a lot. Thank you. Um, you guys rock. Thanks for the stream. It's It's been a fun stream. I really, I mean, for me, I know I already talked about this, but more than the case, um, I'm still nervous about like moving this with the weight in it now. Wow, look at that. Now that's a cooler. That's what happens when you put all your support on one side. It's a good thing everything's solid state these days or this would be bad. Um, I actually like the cooler. It looks a little funny doing that, but uh, just because it's compact and interesting. Um, it's got a shock absorber. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, four by four blazer sent in. A fist bump sticker, that's new to me also. We are doing pretty well the Super Chat progress. Uh, we're going to get through most of them here in a few minutes. Um, JTS79, body pillow much when, never. Liquid flames, uh, any advice for an aspiring polyglot? You were asking the wrong person. My native language is English, but I'm studying Spanish and German. Are any of the apps worth it? So. I speak English pretty well, uh, and um, uh, Chinese I, I think I do pretty okay with spoken, but I'm illiterate for the characters, um, although I can read one, two, and three, and Ren, which is just people, but that's about it. Uh, German I've lost probably half of my ability, so the advice I would have is if this is one of those instances where if you don't use it, you will lose the ability. Um, I liked the app Memrise a lot for learning Chinese, at least. They have other languages in there, too. It's M-E-M-R-I-S-E. -E. I found it it was one of the better ones I'd worked with. Pimsleur was pretty good as well. Um, also watching a lot of videos just from, like, uh, just like street conversation helps a lot. Did you have to do any language courses in school? Yeah, uh, I took Spanish for three years, but um, and I took Latin for four years, wow. but yeah, uh, neither of those really stuck super well. I probably Spanish did more than Latin. Yeah, well, that makes sense. You're more likely to encounter it, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't speak Spanish, but but you took it for a few years. Yeah, okay. I, I can. And honestly, the Latin helped with Spanish more than anything else. That makes sense too. It's a Romance language. I mean, German. Um, like, I can still read it, I feel like, pretty competently. I can read most of the articles I encounter. But as soon as I try to speak it, my brain, there's something dumb in my brain where I, it's like there's only the main language and the secondary language. Mm. So if, if I'm actively learning Chinese and I try to use German, it comes out as Chinese. Like, a guy I sat next to not long ago was like, Sprix du Deutsch. 
And I started replying with Hui. It was just like, I can, <laughs> which is Chinese. I don't know. Don't ask me about that. <laughs> Polyglot is not, not here, uh, but Memorize is a good app. All right. East Coast Overlord says, started working at job building PCs. Is it normal that they, uh, that inside of where the IO shield goes on cases from 2016 cut my fingers a lot? Yes. Very specific. Patrick's right. Um, yeah, that's accurate. So you get a lot of little finger injuries still. Yeah. The cheaper the case. I mean, this one's honestly pretty, they, they deburred all this stuff. Yeah, right. I did a pretty good job removing the birds. Coolers, I think, probably might, has more risk of that than I do at this point, because like, coolers are always sharp. Yeah, coolers, GPS, fins, stuff like that. Uh, Alex Bartholomew says, did all the components come from BPS? What CPU is this? Uh, I'll let you answer those questions. CPU is a 3800 XT because I didn't want to use the same one we used last time. There's not a special reason for that. Um, the only component that is from Brian is the case and all the decoration on the case, the stickers and the uh, graffiti. Um, the rest of this is from our inventory. Uh, this is a B450 board that Steve set aside a long time ago. The card, I don't even remember. What model I like this card comments is. about the case. What in the mother of God is that thing mm. from Pyrocan? <laughs> Good question. We've been trying to figure it out all stream. It's a tube. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks like it looks like if you showed this to Elon Musk, it would be in the tunnels under Las Vegas yeah. next week. Let's see how aerodynamic it is. <laughs> well, I guess it doesn't need to be. It just has to be like one of those, you know, bank pneumatic tube uh, canisters. Yeah. Um, next one is from ASO. Is it worth upgrading from a 1070 Ti? You can answer this. If so, what would you recommend in the 250 to 500 range? I'll do the recommendation if you want to answer the... Uh, I have two 1070s in my computer. Um, I would like to upgrade. <laughs> uh, if I had $500 to spend, I would probably be doing that. Um, I, my, my problems are more around the fact that SLI isn't really a thing anymore, mm -hmm. uh, at least in new games. And everybody in every forum and every comment section is so ready to tell you that. They're so eager to tell you that SLI is dead. Uh, and, so. and your belief is? I mean, they're right. I just wish they would <laughs> shut up about okay. it. I, like, <laughs> I don't, I, I, I'm not Googling this because I think it's good. I'm, I'm Googling it because the SLI isn't working and I want it to work. That's <laughs> right. Um, is it worth upgrading? At this point, probably. It's, it's getting to it. Uh, your, your card's at an a stage now where it's probably pretty significant uplift. So if you feel like you want more frames or higher graphics, then sure. If not, then there's no reason to upgrade just to have a, new, a bigger number on the card. Um, I think the two, 250 to 500 is a very big range. Uh, check on 3070s because the prices have plummeted. Those are probably at the high end of that range. I also have a 4K monitor, which oh, that's is its ambitious. own decision. Yeah, yeah so. that is very ambitious. <laughs> Of the 1070s. Um, next one is Scaro, who says, I appreciate an interesting case, even if it isn't good. Uh, well, you got that today. <laughs> Just choose appropriate hardware to not thermal throttle. Still more interesting than a tall rectangular box. I do think it was fun to, to like, look at these weird cases lately. Peter Blantastic says, did you consult the Council of Patricks before beginning this build? This case is, oh no. This case is totally tubular, dudes. I, it, liter, in the literal sense, it is tubular. Uh, and then he says, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles theme song plays impossibly loud. We can't do that. We'll get demonetized and uh, DMCA'd. Blaze says, hey, Steven, team, love the content. At what generation of top-end GPU does PCIe Gen 4 matter? I have a 3080 on Gen 3, and I'm wondering if I should upgrade. We did that test. Um, I don't remember offhand. I think it was a couple percentage points. It wasn't a as much as you would expect, but it was there. It was starting to show up for like the first time. So um, Gen 4 to Gen 5 doesn't really matter. Gen 3 to Gen 4, if I remember correctly, showed a little bit better. Um, wondering if you should upgrade. I would say 
not unless you want to upgrade anyway, because you're spending a lot of money on the CPU and the motherboard to get maybe a couple percentage points uplift on the GPU. But if you want CPU uplift, then yes, you'll get both. Next one, uh, Scott Johnson says 9700K, GTX 960, 2 gigabyte, 32 gigabytes of DDR4-3200. I need a better GPU for 1440p and some basic 4K video editing. I have a $200 budget. Should I get a 1070 or a 2060? I think I, I think I know which direction I lean on that. I don't know, what do you think? I would go newer, even if it's you yeah. know lower in the stack. Technically, the yeah. numbers, the, yeah. the, the part of the number is lower. Uh, I'm, I'm I'd also I'm a little concerned about uh, driver support falling off mm. for the 1070. Yeah, and uh, there there could be some RTX features that you might actually use even if it's not game ray tracing. Right. Um, if you get it, I, I do like the 2060 as the answer to that. If you get one, uh, so architecturally, moving to the 20 series, they got disproportionately better at 4K tasks, um, so that's beneficial. But uh, if you get a 2060, I'd look for a KO from EVGA. MSI also had some models, but they were not explicitly named. But there was a second revision of the 2060 GPU, and the KO always had it, unless that changed at the end. But and um, that actually boosted some production performance by a massive amount because it was a down bin of another die. So look for that one if you can. Big Al, 441. Hey, guys, love that you're doing live streaming again. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun. I've, I've liked the last three we've done now. Uh, any interest or thoughts on the new Tower 500 case review? That's the second one we've got in the stream. So maybe we should look at it. I don't know if we got some buzz online. Yeah, that's kind of surprising. I I don't remember hearing a bunch about the other tower cases. Yeah, I'll make a note to get one. Tower 500 for review. OK, we'll try and look at it. Um, two and two and one streams enough to start <laughs> setting a pattern. Uh, Tiago Pinheiro Pin Pin says, hello from Portugal. Big fan here. Hello. Thank you. Uh, Andrew Wright. Security question number three, what was your first computer? That one I can't say I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, I, that's, what was the name of your first computer? I actually, what was yeah, its maiden right. name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't remember which one I used first first. But I do know that I had uh, early on an e-machines computer. Mm. I remember how that one looks and performs probably better than most of the other systems because it was an e-machine. <laughs> and uh, I want to say it was like a couple hundred dollars. They were very cheap. Mine was a, uh, a 2009 that we, we always had a family computer. Mine was a 2009 Dell uh -huh. uh, laptop, I think a studio laptop with four wow. gigs of RAM in it. Like your first, your computer, yeah. your first actual computer, yeah. Yeah, well, it was mine, and then my uh, my dad would take it and play uh, Empire Total War on it. Uh, oh, okay. okay. So, All right, yeah. So because my computer was suddenly the the Best highest one. end one in the yeah. house, yeah. My e machines system, uh, I played through Morrowind with a friend on it. Uh, the system was very old at this point, and it had a a rendering issue with the video card I had where when you specifically when you went underground into like caves and tunnels it would not render any of the map but it would render every object and npc or enemy mm -hmm. and um so we Does would that help like <laughs> it helps you know where <laughs> it is but you have to like guess at which where the tunnel goes mm -hmm. and if there's water and um that was when i first started experimenting with upgrading like for real components and uh it did, uh, it did not fix the problem because it was an e-machines from years before that. I remember having to go to Best Buy with my dad to uh, buy a new GPU to play the 2001 hit Medieval Total War. Yeah, that was good. Because our family computer was not capable, and we had to go back and buy an AGP card because we did not have a, a PCIe slot. Yeah. Yes, AGP. I remember getting one of the, the first platform that had it. That was when I read Scott Wasson's reviews. Uh, Dustin Delta. Hi, Steve. Could you recommend a low-profile cooler for ITX to keep an i9-10900K cool? That is asking a lot. 
Working with about three inches of clearance in the case, been testing a cryorig C7G, wondering if there's a better option. The cryorig option is one that I've used. Um, there's not a lot better. Silverstone would be where I would look. Uh, I don't have the heights memorized, but Silverstone has made the, the small form factor downdraft coolers we've used in the past for our own server. So that's worth looking at. Is there an Octua one as well? It's there's an Octua short. one, but I haven't tried it, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, if possible, you could do a CLC, like a 120 mil, if there's a 120 mount somewhere, just because the pump height is about as small as you can possibly get for the coin. It's the only place 120s make sense. I think all of those coolers are going to say that they're not rated for that TDP. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, yeah, no. 10900K is a lot. You're, you're probably going to, you're going to, Probably drop some clocks. Jake M. I don't know if that means something, so I'm not going to read it. Sorry. Attack on Zach. Any CLCs coming out that break the mold you're looking forward to, like moving the impeller off the block, like Swift Tech? I haven't seen anything like that recently. Um, we have a deep cool one coming in. I don't think I can really say much about it yet, but although, honestly, they, they probably care less than anyone else. <laughs> They'd be like, yes, please talk about it. It's under embargo. We don't care. Um, it, I don't know. It's like a lot of them are, are really very similar at this point. Um, the best, the most exciting CLCs we've looked at in the past few years have been the Arctic Liquid Freezers, which have a very different design internally, and the EK uh, DRGB Elites, which those are super cool. Like the pump is basically the same as for Open Loop. Really high quality pump, probably unnecessary but I liked working on that one. Uh, MJ Cobra, any info on the Corsair XD5 pump press LEDs causing fires? We were actually just looking at the other day. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to building with the XH305i bundle. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. Um, we did look at one. You, I, you know more about it than I do, so you and Stone inspected one. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't... I've looked at one of them. I think Stone has also looked at that same one and yeah. not any of the rest of them. So uh, I think he looked at two, but one one was good. Um, so don't take this as the definite answer, but it seems like that reservoir design, you know, the way the top of it is kind of uh, decorated mm. would be prone to getting some moisture trapped in there, especially if, you know, any came down the tube um, and settled on the top. And then the LEDs are obviously on the outside of the reservoir. Mm. So if any moisture got in there, we're thinking maybe there could be some shorting there. Um, yeah, I saw some corrosion, but it wasn't clear to us if that was from when the user removed the pump cap mm -hmm. uh, or the res cap, I mean, and maybe some water got in there or if it was from condensation. And then I think he saw a blown something. I don't know what component it was. Yeah, I think one of the LEDs was toasted, and then it looked like, yeah, they, it, it was burned. They were, they were telling the truth. Uh, yeah, we're thinking maybe condensation, but it's kind of hard to know post-mortem. Uh, Bazinga X, always eat the pizza crust and cold pizza, the best breakfast. I sh of all possible breakfasts. So say I shouldn't comment on that. Uh, Doug Lomax says, I too am a dropout. I just paid to tell everyone that. <laughs> and that says, I, yeah. And then says, I want to work for GM. Love the channel, man. Well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I guess keep an eye out on hiring ads as we post them. Uh, LaSalle Rhymes 3. I like that. I just paid to tell everyone that. LaSalle Rhymes 3. Fun show. Have a great weekend. Thanks. You too. Uh, we're, we're about to close out the stream here too, so we'll get through these super chats. Bazinga X, what CPU are you using? Sorry, I could not resist. It's not the 7980XE. Weez, Geezer TV says, sign to mouse mat or pad. I couldn't resist. Love the channel for many years. Thank you. We will be working on those Monday or Tuesday, so they'll go out all through next week. And uh, yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, we're signing mouse pads and mouse mats bought during the stream today on store.gamersexus.net. But thank you, Weezen Geezer TV, for picking one up and for watching the channel for many years. Every now and then I see someone comment about uh, a video we made like six or eight years ago, and I'm like, the audience now has a better memory of our history than I do sometimes. Yeah. But it makes sense. I guess everyone's got like 
different pieces. And they're more, more likely to watch those videos than like I, I, I don't dig through the archive. Uh, yeah, I videos. watched them all at one point when we were making them, but there were days when we were editing videos at the house and Andrew and I were finishing them at 6 a.m. and I was like falling asleep while we were previewing them. <laughs> uh, 40s, 2000, this is a future request for Patrick. When AM5 and DDR5 releases, can you test the QVL versus random kit uh, or will ramp make QVL unnecessary? I guess, I forget, is that the name of AMD's thing they're doing? I guess it might be, I forget. Um, we can. It wouldn't be too hard, but it's so board dependent. I don't yeah, know. it's like we can't test the whole QBL because we don't right. own all that RAM. Um, we could test random kit pretty easily. Well, as long as we have one that's not on there. Mm -hmm. But then you can't make it. It's hard to prove a negative, as we've said in the past. You can't really make a definitive statement on it if it works on one. Yeah. Yeah, I do wonder, you know, I know I know there was some talk about like the speed supported with two sticks versus four sticks and stuff like that. I, I wonder how that'll behave on right. AMD. Um, Matt says, I almost exclusively use my custom water-cooled O11D, dual 360 mil rad, 5950X, 3080 rig for GTA 5 and YouTube. <laughs> so, I mean, you can mod the hell out of GTA 5, so. And I'm excited for Zen 4 so I can continue to underutilize the hardware I paid too much for. Fair enough. Uh, Ian Waite says, what about fins on the CPU cooler? It looks like they are perpendicular to the airflow in the case. They are. We talked about that earlier. Um, but only perpendicular if the airflow in the front did anything. <laughs> so no air is really able to come in the front. And most of the air is going to come in through up here through the mesh. Uh, where it will, I mean, it's just going to push straight through. So also, this case is a lost cause thermal. Yeah, it's yeah. Also, this is how it fit. Right. We we wanted to use this cooler, and that's where we started from. We didn't start from. We need a cooler that will work well with this setup. Right. Yeah, it's kind of fun. It does butt up right against the video card. So, uh, be quiet. Did well to plan their keep out zone. I thought you were going to say it was going to help. You know, draw heat out of it. Well, hey, we'll do that. <laughs> Maybe not in a good way. Uh, Tiger Toaster says, turning the case, it looks like my grandma's electric drying hood. Thank you for 10 years of updating and educating a grumpy old PC enthusiast from Germany. Well, thank you. Feeling dunk. Uh, it, yeah, this, there were a lot of comments earlier about how it looks like um, uh, air fryers and things like that. Which it's my parents used to have an Electrolux vacuum cleaner from like oh, there were the 50s. That, that, yeah, yeah, that looks just like this. Uh, Jason Wilson, we're, we're at the very end of the Super Chats here. We cut them off, as I said earlier. Um, says, uh, any idea why my 5900X might be randomly dropping to 560 megahertz? No overclocking temps at 560 megahertz. Jesus. Uh, that's very low. Um, no overclocking. Temperatures are great, otherwise stable. No overclocking and temps are great. Uh, some it's got to be a weird BIO setting, like um, some kind of precision booster power setting in BIOS. I would look under advanced CPU options and CPU power options. You could also look at VRM throttle options. Some boards have a uh, temperature where if maybe you accidentally set it or they set it out of the box wrong, where it'll throttle the CPU uh, based on the MOSFET temperature. Um, those would be the things I would look. I would reset BIOS, I think. Save yeah. a profile first and uh, reset it. Also make sure that, you know, performance is actually affected. Because if it's just yeah. dropping to that when you're not doing anything, that's, that's, that that's may be not normal. Be an issue, yeah. Also, yeah, it depends on the software. We talked about that last time. Um, uh, task manager, not necessarily accurate. Yeah, don't, Hard, don't yeah. that. Hardware info is pretty accurate, but they have effective and they have, like, actual. So I look at actual, but. And that has per core clocks, which is going to be what you want. Right. Uh, pro to the bra says, why, we are men burly. OK, I don't, <laughs> that's, I don't know what that's from. I think you got your value, though, from my confusion. Uh, Louis NJ says, should I grab the Sapphire 6950XT Nitro on Newegg down at $1,100, or do you think it might go lower on the 4th? 
not familiar with how Newegg does sales. I like that we're in like FOMO now for video cards. Like, yeah. It's like, buy the dip! <laughs> that it's a physical product. Um, it probably won't go higher. It might go out of stock, but. Yeah, I wouldn't count on one specific model. I mean, yeah. Like, if they put stuff on sale, it's probably just going to be because it hasn't sold. Right, it will be, yeah, yeah. because it hasn't sold. Um, Newegg, yeah, they, they have pretty good sales at certain times of year, but to really maximize it, you, I feel like you have to be pretty open to what specific thing. You, so, like, motherboards, they put on sale a lot because there's just thousands of SKUs of motherboards, and some of them sit because they're not marketed well, but the board's fine. That's an instance where the sale's good. But then, like, you want specifically the nitro? I don't know. I, I might just consider buying it now. It, it may drop, but it's kind of a toss-up. Uh, a uh, Bavarian Normie pleb <laughs> says, Wendell mentioned that you had experienced issues with the Broadcom storage controller in the NAS he built for you. Could this issue be resolved? I think we kind of. Uh, he's probably talking about. Um, detection of 20 terabyte drives, I think. Uh, if that's what he's talking about, I don't know the context, I didn't see it. Then the resolution was we put the drives in a different bay. And it yeah, I was going to say, Wendell would know the problem better than we would. <laughs> Wendell knows <laughs> much better than yeah. I do. <laughs> Level one text for those who don't know. Uh, excellent channel, you should check it out. Okay, all right, we are, we are past our cutoff here that we put on the screen. Um, there were some more here. Uh, I, I, I appreciate that I'm reading them, but we're not going to read through these uh, because we did a cutoff on the Super Chats just so we could, we've been standing here for quite a while now. So, um, okay, final thoughts on the case. Let's do that for the people who see the upload and want to jump to the conclusion. Uh, I think it would work best if you put smaller components in here, and if you put smaller components in here, you should buy something like an an R two hundred P or uh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, or a point. Torrent Nano or something that does ITX because you know, why are you buying a case like this if you're not gonna use all the space in it? Yeah, it's gotta be the only answer to buy this is looks. Mm -hmm. And it's not I mean, at least like the tank or the spaceship or the cat cases, like there may be specific reasons you want those. It's interesting. It reminds me of those um is it Corsair that sells those towers? Now the kind of roundish ones. Um, I think that's Corsair, the pre-built. Yes. Oh yeah, the Corsair one. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, Apple has its garbage its yeah. trash can. <laughs> so many trash cans. Yeah. Um, the uh, the buttons are interesting. The switch is pretty nice. But we're reaching. <laughs> but this <laughs> this has two button cutouts and molds even, but only one of them is workable. So um, zero out of ten for me. The I don't know. I mean, it's bad. That's the conclusion. <laughs> like the front's closed off. It's only breathing through the holes in the top by accident. They didn't plan for that. Um, very hard to work with. The hard drive cages are in the way of the cables. But I liked finally putting this Be Quiet cooler on something. The TF2. Mm -hmm. And that's the best we got out of it. So here's the completed product. But that's going to be it for this one. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I like this comment. Uh, health is the last one I'm going to read. It says, I bought the whole case. I'm going to use the whole case. That's pretty much where yeah, we are. you got. get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was fun. I liked, uh, liked doing this, these streams. So we're going to have more of these coming up. We're doing them mostly every week. It's, it's not scheduled, so you'll just have to catch it when you catch it. And um, after we close the stream here, we will uh, basically the promo of signed mouse pads, mouse mats, that'll end as soon as the stream goes blank. So if you want one signed, you buy it now and start at GamersNexus.net. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. We have some in-depth stuff coming up for you next week. We are sticking to the sort of one more in-depth or technical piece and then a review piece, uh, news and streams. So that's the, uh, that's the plan for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.
it's alive.